This conference will now be recorded. Hey, Cal, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, are the uh, the uh, speakers over by the board, are they on? Yes, they are. Okay, the audio is just kind of not so great. So but it's going uh, to be there. Uh, it's just not. Uh, oh, don't go. I put some underwear on your bed and you can put it. Not very nice. List. Yep. We have underwear on the desk. Yeah, that's 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 an on, that's somebody on online now. So I just muted her. A little bit too much information. All right, everybody. It's nine thirty. Nine thirty one, actually. We've been waiting for Russ. I can't get a hold of him. I don't know what's going on with that part of it. Um, Warm, so Cal, do you want to? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Baird. Present. Miss Hanson. Mr. Kish. Mr. Truckee. Here. Mr. McNamee. Here. Sir, you do have a form. Thank you. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay. Kevin, do you plan on staying for the entire meeting or did you want to get moved to the front? Do you have something to talk about or do you want to stay or what? What's uh, we have a couple of uh, items uh, that would be great to be at the front. It's up to you, but we were willing to stay the entire time. So, okay. Whatever's good for you. It's up to you. If you're planning on staying, we'll. We're going to keep it in order. Okay. Uh, approval of the agenda. Is there anything we need to move around on the agenda? That's what I just. Yeah, I know. Uh, you do have two late proposals that came in. I don't see them here, but Mr. Soto, uh, they would be 10A or 10B and C, unless you don't want to add them because of the lateness of them coming in. It's okay. Um, is the fellow with the GIS here? He's supposed to be here. I maybe mean, just had a hard time finding it. Okay. Not seen in the audience. All right. If there's no changes to the agenda, we'll move on. Uh, I need a motion to approve it. Yeah, yeah. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Audience comments on agenda items. Did we have a? Did we have anything on our list? I do, but I'd like to wait until the end until we bring up the PMG. I can address that, whichever. Go ahead and adjust it now during the comment section. Catherine Oswald, Sunset Cay Lakes. Um, it came to light after the last meeting about DMG's uh, owner or the head of the company and his past. And I'd like to find out why the board did not vet this company, why the board did not let. Uh, let us know what the background was. Okay. Um, speaking for myself, I vetted this company 
typically when I vet a company, I look to see what the company actually does. I didn't vet the individuals who work in the company. Yes. Yeah, he does. But once we did find out that information, we did have lengthy conversation with him about it. Um, so that has been discussed with him. I just don't know why we didn't know about it. You knew about it as soon as we knew about it. We didn't know about it either. Okay, any other uh, audience comments? All right, good morning. Morning. I get around up this morning, so. <laughs> okay, next consideration of the, the new management firm, the DMG contract. Um, Tony, did you have anything on that? No, uh, the, going back and forth in various terms, I have a clean version of it. I'm just re re reviewing it. We can just uh, go for 10 minutes so I can make sure this matches up with my last redline version. All right. Right. My other meeting last night came early until 6.30. Okay. So we'll we'll come back to that one. Thank you. Approval of the, of the meeting minutes. Um, we had two, two months in here. Uh, or two, last two meetings, meetings I mean. You had your last meeting and you have the continuation meeting. Correct. Okay, I didn't get a copy of any minutes. They, on the they were the 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 additional material uh, passed out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I've got two more. So we're we're already email them. Here, give me this one. Uh, I gave it. Um, I have the one that I went through them, and one of the things that, that I saw on um, attendance on the January 20th meeting shows Dave Schmidt being here, which as being present, he was not present, he was online. Well, right, but he's identified as being online below in the first <laughs> order of business. When we have the roll call, it says David Schmidt, the engineer and several residents also participate via web conference. Uh -huh. That's he's here that, that, that above doesn't necessarily mean physically here it's just that they were in attendance okay but if you want to change it they're your minutes that's okay uh, line 35 chairman mcnamee have, has same minutes Correct. Have seen a vehicle with a trailer parked in the grass, and Supervisor Kish will investigate. I. What? <laughs> that's what it says. There was a discussion on that, uh, as far as a vehicle. It was very broad uh, <coughs> statement, and she's trying to make the move. Reflective of what was said as possible without being verbatim. If you want, just strike it. But it was suggested and commented. And I think uh, someone from the audience spoke well. So. It, it was about the signs on Newport. Right. K. Okay. But this doesn't give us any context or anything to tell us what mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about. Yeah, there was no, I don't remember any trailer being parked there. I went and reviewed, I looked at the signs of No, it says a vehicle, a oh, and a trailer. Yeah. It talked about I mean, if you want to strike it, it's, uh, if it has no relevance, you can strike it. If you want to su suggest some changes in the verbiage, we can do that too. Well, I think the bottom line was that they wanted the signs down by the marina to keep the boats and the trailer parking. Right. Uh, the signs are there. The, the signs further down. And are down are the ones they, they didn't. They went and gone. Yes. Right. And I didn't see the need for them to be so there. That was just a situation where there was a truck parked down where the signs are. So they should stay there to try to keep them going to the parking lot. Definitely. The fire parking lot. And then, uh, right. Yeah. So, you just strike it. Either the, or you just, just, just took out the period after investigate uh i think you were going to look at was the science needed yeah that's dead yeah so right. i mean it does say that uh chair mcnamee has seen a vehicle and trailer parked in the grass uh near 
the no parking signs? Well, I'm just looking at it from somebody coming back a year from now and reading sure. this, and they're and it's like, what are they talking about? Okay, strike it. Yeah. Okay. I need more. Does anybody else have anything on the January 20th minutes? Yeah. Yes, sir, sure. If I may. Um, um, beginning at line 39, or paragraph or something. Page 39. What last sentence? What? Minutes. Uh, 20th. We're still the 20th. Okay. Um, and it says attorney peers regarding the uh, pipes under the 41 bridge in the painting. Mm -hmm. And then it said attorney peers stated that he would like the project to be part of a grant. And this would be considered. I'm not sure why I would. Yeah. Maybe I asked a question. I think I recall asking a question. Could, could this be part of a grant application? Uh, we had Mitch. It, you talked to Mitch about that also. But, but I don't think I made the. Well, I, I agree. I, I, I don't okay, decide that. Like, I may have said. <laughs> right. Um, so, I guess. It's saying you're question, advocating for it. The question is whether the project could be part of it. Right. So be How would you like that changed? If it could be, Mr. Chairman, uh, Attorney Pierce. Uh, question whether the project could be part of the grant. Period. Fair enough. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. My quick review. But... Okay. Then we move on to the minutes of the continuation of the meeting, and that was on the 27th. Does anyone have anything they want to bring up on that? Mr. Chair, if I could, on um, beginning on line 12 or item 12, mm -hmm. it uh, says Tony Pierce mentioned that it's paralegal that uh, Lenore is my partner, uh, Lenore Greatfield. Okay. Please change that to partner instead yes, of paralegal. Please. Otherwise, I will never hear the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she heard it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't appreciate changing status. So thank you for that consideration. Uh, anyone else? Um, on line 43 of the same one, Chairman McNamee asked if the buyer of parcel 13 can be asked to reimburse the district for legal and engineering fees related to the purchase of the property. Um, I think we were talking about uh, not the purchase of the property, but the, the, the expenses that we're incurring moving forward with the zoning changes. That is my recollection also. Yeah, we have not, I didn't ask for engineering and legal fees for the purchase of the property. Only what we could, what we could cover in the future like the dealing with the, I'm sorry? The processing, future processing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Zoning of the property. Someone has a vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. I would just suggest to be regarding the development of the property. That would include the rezoning, utility relocation, and all those. Or and maybe just and further expenses incurred. So we have a we have a provision in the operating agreement. If you want to go, sorry, anybody you want to mention that? Yeah, we'll do that. We get that. Yeah, because I think it's cost up. Okay, we've got Good. 45 documents we're dealing with. <laughs> so how do we want that changed? I would just say regarding the development of the property. Okay. I think that's a catch-all for does anyone else have any issues with the minutes of the meeting from the 27th? If not, we'll move on. Okay. You want to make a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. GIS presentation and discussion. Uh, he's here. Oh, is it? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, you have your computer, right? Uh, yeah. If you could log into the meeting, then I can share and it will go up there. Or we don't have a screen. Um, is everybody logged into the same meeting? Uh, if anyone's myself. logged into the meeting right now with your agenda packet, then we can get it. 
not locked in. Uh, if you put it up on your screen, though, they could watch your computer screen. Sure. I was hoping when it said presentation, that would mean you would be able to see it. Uh, you don't have a screen. Okay. Boys, do you guys have one here? We had one show it when they sold us the project, right? That's, yeah, that was my personal screen. Huh. Mr. Chairman, Chair, we need another screen after that one meeting. We ordered screens. So we have a big screen. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. When would we see those? Well, if, if you want to have them down here for the board meeting. Okay. I'll bring them. Okay. All right. Toss it in my car. Do you want us to give you a, a bit? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Let's, let's move on to utility operations. Mitch? Good morning, sir. The uh, water treatment plant, everything ran good this month or last month, no issues. We met all of our requirements. The wastewater plant, everything ran well, met all of our requirements. Um, we made uh, 2.23 million gallons of water. We treated 2.4 million gallons of wastewater. And we sent out 9 million gallons of reuse water. We used the same amount of chlorine. Um, we did have a couple uh, water usage complaints. We went out and did the meter needs verified. And those were all satisfied. We did our normal monthly checks. Um, no odor complaints. The number three calcite tank, I can't remember if I told you last month, but it's been installed and back in operation. The uh, TBS meter and the chlorine and pH meters that we ordered, the analyzers continuous, we have installed the the pH and the chlorine were still waiting on the TBS. Um, the uh, permit renewal, David's aware of it. I think you've been speaking with him and the capacity analysis report. The uh, well road, we put the gravel on. I met with Dan, we went over a couple of culverts. We're gonna get those replaced, add a little more uh, gravel. We poured the concrete pad for the generator. The generator set, we'll be connecting it this week. So we'll be back in business back there. Are you going to, are you, excuse me, are you going to need um, dirt pushed up around that pad to make it for fall protection? So we're going to put gravel around that pad. Okay, so perfect. It, it'll be within the limits for perfect. fall protection. Yeah. All right. And it, it's a small pad. I don't yep. know if you've seen it right up. The I have. So okay, thank it'll you. Be well. so you. You elevated it? Right. It is elevated a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not the 30 inches that we had spoke about, though. So, but with with the the elevation that we have, so we we poured it 18 inches, and it's got the fuel tank that puts it up about three foot um, above the road, and then we're gonna fill up gravel around it. So, so if the water up, came up, it's gonna hit the gas or the fuel yeah, tank. Yeah, it'll be good. Good idea. We'll be able to walk up to it without anyone falling. Good idea. So it should be good. Um, we have an open house today. If anybody wants to come to the plant and work around, you're welcome to. I'll answer any questions you have, and there'll be lunch if you want to have lunch there. So, oh, one other thing. We pull hundreds of samples every year at the plant. We pulled a nitrate and the nitrite that we sent to the lab and the lab did not run it. So we sent that to DEP. The DEP issued a, a warning letter to us that we'll have to post on the website. We have a letter from the lab saying that we missed it. The samples before and after were good. There's no water quality issues, but I just want to make you aware that we will see that coming. There's no fine or anything like that, but um, we have a letter from the lab as well taking responsibility, and we have since changed laboratories. I know. Dave, did you have something? No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, that's it. No, if you have any questions for me. No, I was out there yesterday. I noticed Mitch had like 15 guys out there pressure washing and cleaning and all that, and I got to thinking after that, that's like getting prepared for a graduation party at your house. Maybe we should do that once a year. We do clean it every year. I mean, we do that yeah. every year. Yeah, it looked good, though. Right. Oh, the other thing, too, Mitch pointed out that um, his firm paints our fire hydrants. Yes, we'll be starting. Was unaware of that. Yes. Yeah. So every other year we try to paint. Um, if anybody has, a, do we have a fire hydrant or two that we would like them to start with that are specifically bad? There's, there's some that need it, so you might as well just go through them. It'll go quick once we start. 
Okay. Probably within three weeks they'll be done. Appreciate that. You guys, you guys appreciate the rust or anything? Yeah, so what we do is we go around, we pressure wash everything, and then we service the fire hydrant, grease it if it needs to be greased, exercise it. And then if it has rust, we'll just take a wire brush and get that and get some hospital on it. Same thing. Did you mention that uh, they're repairing something? Oh, the notice? It'll be, it'll be on the website. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, well. Can I say something about mentioning these guys? Kathy Oswald, St. Uh, Sunset K. Our list station went off over at Sunset K, and they were there within, I mean, I timed it three minutes. They were over there fixing it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's just. Well, Mitch is doing a great job for our yeah, community. It's yeah. driving people crazy. <laughs> And I would encourage everyone to go to that plant tour or, you know, go through the place. It's pretty nice um, just to see what we're talking about during these meetings. You guys are welcome as well, but you've probably already been there. It's up to you. Okay. Um, are you ready for your GIS yet? Yeah. I'm just okay. trying to figure out how we, what's the best way to show this for you guys. I'm, I'm logging to the go-to. So in case, so that way the folks on the go-to are not missing out, but as far as like, for you guys, just trying to figure out how, what's the best. Okay, you just turn your computer just, around, they can see it, uh, okay. or they can get behind you too. Okay, I got a question. We can see it. Charles Gordon, Peacock Lane. Uh, the other item, Mitch, what about the cost of the uh, road? Uh, there's supposed to be an update. What was it? Road back to where the generators at. So we did back that it was on last month's bill. The board had approved up to twenty thousand. I think we spent nineteen. We all got up as much profit as we could buy for that twenty grand. What's going to happen to the road as far as the culverts? They're working on that present. We, we we have we were out there the other day marking culverts that needed to be fixed or replaced or whatever. We take three of them, 18 inch culverts that have to be replaced. We opened up the end. There was a couple of them with crushed ends on them. We have one of them opened up while we were there. And, and there's another one they're going to go back um, with some equipment and open it up. Um, those ends been crushed for some time. So those will all be open. The culverts will all be running water. Everything that's there and has been there will be, will be running water and open. So that'll be fine. Um, we have some culverts that are getting a little rusty on the bottom. The bottoms have some issues. We are going to try to pick the replacement of those up in a grant in the future, but at this time they're, they'll run as much water as you can put through them, but they're getting uh, pretty rusty on the bottom. So we'll look at that under a grant and we have that coming up. But as far as right now, if a storm rolled in tomorrow, um, every one of those culverts, as soon as we replace those three, Every one of those culverts will be doing what it did. That road is, is not damaged at all compared to what it was. I have a question. Do we need additional culverts back there? Well, that becomes a Corps engineers thing. And we're working with the Corps engineer because we talked to them about impact from the restoration project for the Everglades. All right. So that is something we'll have to take up with Corps engineers because we're going to get into the more engineers is saying that our water isn't going to rise here, and, and I think that's hogwash. Um, canals drain swamps, all right? That's why those canals are in there. They drain that whole section of land that we're going to build houses on, call it Golden Gate Tour, the grid, or whatever you want to call it. That whole section that's back here behind us, if you look on your uh, map, pull up Google Earth or anything, and you'll see all the grid work above our neighborhood here, right? All that grid work were roads that were put in to build houses back there. They were done. They were blacked up. They were cement bridges. It was all in there. The infrastructure was there when the state decided to restore that. And um, so as they restored that, they closed the canals. As part of the Everglades restoration, all the big pumps on 75 pushed the water, are going to pump the water out so it can disperse sheep flow through the land. And they're going to restore the water flow the way it was pre-canal time. Right, so canals drain the water, they take the water table down. That's why they put them in there. They wouldn't be able to build houses if they didn't put canals in. 
as they fill the canals, the water has to go through the land. That's going to bring the water table back up again. So yes, we are looking at the issues that that will create. The Corps Engineers um, has worked with uh, six LS farms right down from us. They have 5,000 acres of tomato farms. They have a substantial amount of money that the Corps Engineers are providing to put in dikes, things like that. Um, they say that we have no effect. So we are working with the Corps Engineer to address all that. One other thing to leapfrog on that too is that uh, we, we need a new uh, well line out there. It's almost two miles long. It's probably, well, the last time they checked, it's a million and a quarter, a million and a half, maybe even more than that. Dan's working on trying to get mitigation money to raise our, our uh, water supply lines out to that well and get that covered by mitigation money, which is a big ticket item for what we're looking at in our CIP in the future. So um, he's working very diligently on that to make that happen. And uh, I, for one, couldn't be happier with the progress that he's making with these fellows in such a short time. Core Engineers is not real open to telling them what you think is going on, right? The Core Engineer is pretty much this is what our studies, we did all the studies, this is the way it's going to be. And uh, that doesn't hold up. Uh, six LS farms, of course, they're a bigger operation and they swing a lot bigger hammer than we do. But uh, the Corps engineer buckled and, and they have millions of dollars of projects going in there to build levees, things like that. So we're right in the middle of the, the thing. I don't know how they can just ignore us and say it won't affect anything we have. So we'll continue to work on that. I can't tell you exactly how that's going to go. We are in contact with the Corps. Um, we'll see how that all comes together. Did you want to speak to them about the meeting that you had with Corby Cole? Um, I could mention it. Well, that's what he's talking about. No, I know, but the rest don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to sit before you get there. <laughs> Typically, the agencies, <clears throat> in order to create a record, Written communication, like a letter, a detailed letter, explaining the district's position, I think would be helpful. I understand you've had a number of communications with them, but I think an official position from the district, maybe have a letter drafted for the next board meeting from the chair to send to submit with all the engineering concerns and other concerns, to make it part of the board's file. I think that could be very helpful. Good. We haven't sat down with Corey engineers yet. I, have, I spoke to the gentleman on the phone. Um, they, we do have a study, actually, that was done a while back. This was, uh, it talks about the study and the Corps engineer coming in here. Um, they were in here and they did a, a well grade road trip report. They came out, Corps engineers. This was prior to, we have the date on this, I don't think. Um, the actual study when they were here. I'm not sure when they were here, but it wasn't any time recently. It's been a while since they've been here, months. Um, so anyway, they came out, looked at the road, and they said the road needed some repair and that uh, we had to take care of that, and we are doing that. They talked about a couple of crush culverts. The ends of them were crushed, and uh, I don't know when those were crushed, but they were going to be straight here shortly. One of them we straightened up um, right while we were there. Uh, the other one's which is going to take care of and get them straightened up. So we're going to try to meet uh, all the discrepancies they said we had with the well road. Um, when they came out and did their study. Um, what they won't address right now is the impact of the increased uh, is the higher water table. Um, they feel that uh, telling me that water is not going to be any higher. And somehow my common sense back in here somewhere says, no, when you plug the canals, your water table is coming up. And that's what uh, six LS farms is worried about. But that's why they're building their levees. I'm um, all that kind of thing. Remember, canals drain the water. And when you push it back through the land, the water table has to come up. The reason they put the canals in was to lower the water table in the first place so they could build and, and maintain houses out there. And if they fill all the canals, the water table is going back up to the way it used to be. So we will see a higher water table. We don't know how much higher. We're working on that with the railroad, um, with uh, some of the grants we're looking into. Uh, we may be able to through some grants uh, lift everything out. I'm worried about electrical boxes and things out 
um, on the well road because they're only two, three feet off the ground. And uh, with the hurricane and everything, we saw water levels that were at least that high out there, probably. I think it was. Mitch, you might be able to. Just a couple yeah, of feet. I actually have video of it a, a foot above the well road before the hurricane. Okay. Because it had rained that whole week. Right. So after the hurricane. Right, and it's just starting to dry up out there now. Usually by this time, it's uh, we don't have any standing water and it's dry, um, so it's not it's still wet out there yet. So I think that as this continues and they push more water, we will see higher water. That's the way it is. So they have they have monies and, and impact monies and grants and stuff that we'll try to work with to do some things like replace the pipes and uh, raise all the electrical out in the well field. Submerge the third wellhead. Um, we have three wells out there. Two of them are, have submerged pumps. One does not. We have to get the third one uh, submerged. It's changing out the whole pump. It goes down the hole and sealing up the electricity so if the water comes over the top, not a big deal. But we have to raise all the boxes. I just spoke to, um, we're going to get into that down the road when we get into the FEMA grants. But, um, I spoke to a grant writer with FEMA grants, and he thinks that that can all be done on and under the FEMA grant. We might be able to raise all the electrical out there. Um, so we'll have to get with David then and, and get some 100-year uh, or 500-year levels and see what we got to look at for height when we raise it. Um, but um, that's some of the stuff that we'll be um, looking at. So it's not just it. It's not putting a band-aid on something. This is this is a big operation. It's millions of dollars, and it's going to take some time to get it all together. Yeah, uh, we're going to move on this as quickly as we can because Orchid Coal um, has expressed concerns about it, and also Lindsay Case's property would potentially be affected by it. So while he's in the planning stages, it would be best if we could get this all taken care of so that we're not playing. Catch up after the fact. No, we're raising it a foot in our excavation, and we're not, according to their model, this canal is not going to overflow. I'm it's sure just, it's not just the canal that we're worried about, it's the groundwater right. coming up. So, but we're, that, we're working on it anyway. So, anything else from anybody about this topic? Okay, let's move back to our GIS, um, please. So you're the printer, uh, Felipe, so you can uh, put that on, share your screen with everyone on the Okay. All right. Well, good morning. Thank you guys for taking the time to let me come here today. Um, as of today, your system is up and running. Uh, it's, it's been up and running now for a while, but it should be complete. Uh, as you guys already know, the system is private, so only can be accessed via username and password, which I believe you guys all have that at this point. If not, I can send a mass email out to you guys with your username and password and the link, and I'll, I'll create a tutorial on how to save it onto your system so it's just a one-click button and it can be opened up from your... I would love it if you would do that for yeah. us. Okay. Well, and I guess it's a mass email and arguably it's a public record. So uh, features on this GIS, Felipe, that involve utility lines? No, no utility lines, no water sewer. That that has not public. That's not on the system. Okay. That data can be created and can be in the background, but it's not going to be displayed publicly. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And, thank you. No, no, because the statute that provides for that ability to be exempt. Thank yeah. you. Correct. So I'll, I'll set that tutorial for you guys. So that way, preferably, and I'll also include in the tutorial as well, um, an app that you guys can download for your iPads and for your phones. It's an easy app, which you'll be able to open it from the app and there, the functionality will all be the same. It'll be a lot more smooth. There'll be GPS capability and so forth. Um, as mentioned earlier, these are all the layers that, that have been created, that have mm -hmm. been working closely with David, um, and Holantes and other folks, other consultants, getting as much information as we can to put, build this system for you guys. We have uh, the easements and deeds, and there's a hyperlink in there that you guys can click on, and that brings it to Holmontes figure, so you guys can verify that all the information that's in there is backed up from Holmontes, so that information is there publicly. Um, Excuse me. 
So I, I noticed that that's on um, the K's drive side quite a bit, but I'm trying to find out where our easements are mm -hmm. and, and because we got to clean them and whatnot. And especially on the Newport side, I'm, have we got some Newport uh, on the west side of the canal there? Uh, this side right here, right left, there yeah. and down. Yeah, that whole side there. I'm trying. Um, so do we, do we have anything on this GIS that's showing us the the stormwater drainage system and the easements that are involved with that? So I do have some easements in there. Um, if we go and click on the, stru the structures and pipes, yeah. um, these pipes in here are all, all within these easements. We have drainage easements. We have utility easements on this side over here. Um, we also have, uh, let's see here, we have, that's more of a utility easement as well too. All the flats are also in here as well too. So if you click on this, well, there is no flat currently for Sunset K, but for Evening Star K, there is a plat that I included in there for you uh -huh. to verify. Um, but I have a layer that highlights all the easements that I could gather as of today. It's still, I mean, I'm more than happy to continue to look for those. Um, it is a work, it is an effort to get all this information. As you can see here, let me turn this off. Everything that's in red in a dashed line are all easements. Yes. So we have some over here, we have some here, have some here to the north, and that all that matches the records that, that I included as well too. Um, but you said you were interested in this area here? Uh, yeah, actually I'm in, yeah, because on, on uh, the east side there, the all the drainage swales are in the backyards next to the, the canal, but on the north side, they're all up in the front next to the streets. And I've been looking to find, do we have a permitted easement in that? If we do, how many feet out is it, you know, and, sure. and whatnot? And I haven't been able to find that so anywhere. Off of Morning Circuit or? In, well, even along, the, even along the road itself. Um, you, okay. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I there, there's ditches in there, but I can't find anywhere where we, we as a community. I don't think we have a permitted drainage easement along um, Newport, Newport Drive. Drive. I think we've got a dedicated right of way, which allows us uh, to. The right of way. Okay, yeah. Um, how do we see that? Well, uh, a portion of it is on the plat where it is platted to the south. I believe the northern portion of Newport was an easement document or a right of way document that was created many, many years ago. Uh, I think I've seen it. Is this what you're referring to, David? Yeah, that side's pretty good. Let's see. I'm trying to... That's that's uh, uh, Sanctuary okay. Point. Oh, Sanctuary Point. Yeah, that, that Sanctuary Point area has pretty much all been platted. Uh, there are some site development plan approvals for Sela Marsas, uh, but all the rest of it is platted. So those drainage easements would show up on the plats. This Newport, uh, Newport side, that part of it was platted, the very southern end, but part of it to the uh, north, I think, was conveyed through a separate instrument. But um, I was hoping that we, we would be able to look at our GIS and see well, yeah, that's what, what mm -hmm. we've got. Uh, I was of the understanding that it's, this was completed. That was my... That well, was it, my... It, it's, it's, this is everything that I've been able to compile up to this point. Absolutely. I mean, I've been more, more than happy to keep working with David on okay. um, working on those plots. It's a... It's a, it is a work in progress. Yeah, it's a that. work in progress, but it's tedious to get all those delineated and, and put into a GIS. Yeah, and, and I haven't had the opportunity to look at anything more recent than what was supplied back in the end of August. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got very limited information. So when you do send out the uh, passwords and yeah, so yeah. forth, then I can dive into it if the board desires. Well, this is my issue is I've been trying for months to try to find out what we're responsible for in here um, is, you know, especially over on, on that West Newport side, um, because those ditches and whatnot need to be cleaned. And I'm trying to find if there's surveys or there's something in here that tells us what it is and what it's supposed to be and who's responsible for paying for it. I, I can gather what information I may have. I've got a couple of big three ring binders full of different instruments and easements and different things like that. that been collecting over the years. 
but I remember coming to your office and and you know trying to get this down. Right. And I and I'm not getting any closer. Okay. Let, let me try to send you what I've got as far as the uh, the, the plats, and then also uh, I think I've got a copy of that instrument that conveyed the darling portion. Do you think it'll show like the the sanctuary point? It'll have show details like that. Well, on sanctuary point again, that was all platted, so we've got real good information on sanctuary point. And then also even uh, going a little bit further north on uh, on Kay's Drive, mm -hmm. where, where the information is a little little more limited is over on the Newport side. Okay. So what's the point of this? That's, that, 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 that's what I want to know. I mean, what's the point? You, you're doing all this. That's why I was against it from the beginning. You're doing all this. You know, it's supposed to save us engineering money or something. But... You're still working with the engineer to get this put together, so I don't get it. I don't get what the what this GIS is for. I, everything we put into it, I don't get it. And I was always going to use it. And I was under the understanding that this was a three-year contract or three-year invoice, so we were going to pay, you know, a little over eight thousand dollars over a three-year period. And from what I'm understanding is we've already paid for all of that. Yeah, as we did. Well, except for this last bill. And that's why I'm wondering when we had an agreement with him to do things in a in a stage thing. Why did we Why did we accelerate the payments on it? That was the board decision to get it all done right away. They authorized us to to, yes. to did we did we give him a, a a change order then? Or I mean, did it was just a, a reflection in the minutes. Uh, it just said get it done. Get it when it was presented the boards looked at it and they said oh we want all of this now and instead of doing it over three years it was decided to do it all at one as one project well i've looked at what he's got and one thing that jumped out at me right away is is uh ownership of land properties and i'm clicking on different properties that that I own myself that are showing that they're owned by somebody else and whatnot. And I'm wondering what good is it? Like Russ well, says, what good is it if, we, if we're using outdated information? It's what, when was this? Because the just recently, recently. Okay. Well, I have the 2023 data up there because the data changes, the appraiser data changes weekly, uh, but I make an effort to do it every month. So, as of last week, there's 2023 Collier County data there. So I'm not, it's something that I, I, that once they update and I get my hands on it, I push it and I release it to your system. Okay. So um, as far as you clicking on properties and they're not showing the correct information, you know, let me know, but that, that shouldn't be the case at all. Okay. Um, going back to Russ's point, I understand where you're coming from, absolutely. But the best thing to do is this is an investment for your for your development to be able to have information at your hands, knowing where all your structures are at, your pipes are at, and getting it to the point where it's going to save you money in the future because you're going to know what you're responsible for and what you're not responsible for. This is trust me, I've worked with developments that are still working off of old maps, old plots, and they're in the dinosaur age. And we, we want we're trying to get you out of that dinosaur age to get into a system like this where you everybody on your board right here has access to it so when you get this done it's going to be like an official <clears throat> government record that we can use to proceed with anything that goes on say the hotel gets torn down and they want to uh, rebuild it we're going to be able to use this gis in order to uh, make decisions all everything that's going to be done everything that's this is as good as it sorts and i work closely with david on this so it's a reflection of Whole Montes is a reflection of me, is a reflection of your information of what you have here. Absolutely. You'll be able to make decisions. I mean, it's going to help. Well, we'll be able to make decisions. But like I said, say somebody wanted to build a new hotel over there, right? Are they going to be able to use this information? Will we be able to supply them with this information? That's your get? decision. Absolutely. But, and it's going to be valid information. It's going to be uh, taken by the county or the state or whoever is involved as official. Yes, absolutely. This is all public data. But the problem that comes into this is you're going to pay him by the hour to continue putting this information in, and you're going to pay Dave's firm by the hour to supply him oh, all no, that I information. I get that. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a money 
what, what eating are, machine. What are the ongoing costs? And like once we get it set up and the information's all in there, what's the maintenance fees annually? There is, uh, there is right now. It's, it's you're paying for privacy, so it's a hundred dollars a year. It's ten dollars a month. That's it. Okay, as far as maintaining it, bringing every year, every it, month, you bring up to date. That's 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 me. That's, that's not part of yeah. that system. We're not paying any more for that. No. Okay. I mean, if if Russ says, "Hey, I want I want to add new information," you know, we we collect the new valve locations, or we did a bunch of new work and and so forth, and then I would I can get with Russ and be like, "Okay, that's going to take me a day's worth of work," and that's it. And it's okay. just the base of work. So we don't have an ongoing maintenance fee to keep the information fresh on that. One of the things I was looking at over on um, that case drive side was I looked at, at the county and they show an overlay of the streets in in uh, in Sanctuary Point. And then when I look at this that shows where it is, they're offset. Um, they're not the picture and the overlays are offset. So if I'm trying to find out um, how far the easement is off of the street, the street is shifted over on, on this. And, and, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, all we're doing is getting the same outdated information from the county and putting it onto this. Well, so if it's wrong there, it's wrong here. I, I use that as the base, but I'm not just cookie cutting from the county and putting it there. You know, I, I do what I do to make sure that it's as accurate as possible. So in that case, it would help me a lot, Steve, if you could take a snapshot or, or take a screenshot and be like, hey, this doesn't look right. And then I'll look at it on my end to make sure that it's reflected correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I can guarantee you that I'll definitely get back to you to make sure I look at it on my end. But I'm not sure what area you're referring to. Uh, well, that's one of them. But, but my biggest disappointment in is it's trying to find out now, where do our water lines go? Where do our sewer lines go? Where is all that stuff? And where are the drainage easements? I, I, I'm trying to find that and I'm not getting, well, I mean, well, we have more on our website with where the pipes and everything are going than we have on here. As far as water and sewer, that was never included in the scope of services because we don't want to be able, we can't put that out because that's that's Homeland Security. Well, what we ex what we talked about, if I'm not mistaken, was that we were going to have two different access points. The public would be able to access yes, the we, thing mm -hmm. and the, the board would be able to access the private part. Sure, that's, that is but correct. Yeah. What I'm understanding is we don't have the private part. This is the private part. What you guys have access to is the private. Okay, the but we, but the we, public part, I haven't published yet because I want to make sure that we're all okay on our end before I I give you the public version and, and it's embedded into the CID website. Okay. So that's not a whole lot of, that's 10 minutes of my time to do that. So, but before we publish it and everybody can have access to it, I want to make sure that it's, I get your blessing. Well, what got me going is when I heard it's complete. Well, it's, that, it's, it's the words that were used. It's complete. We're, yeah, we're towards completion. Absolutely. I, there's not a whole, I mean, I'm going to work with David on making sure those easements are, are cleaned up and we can get as much information as we can and get that on there. But as far as all the heavy lifting is done on my end, I've been working on this for seven months. So right. I just want to make sure we can fine tune and, and thus get everything done and cleaned up before I can give you the public version and it can be embedded in the public website. Flippe, I haven't been able to get I haven't had the opportunity to get into the the CAD portion of it at all, but is there attributes on all the lines saying what size they are or if they're private yeah. or public? Say that last or if they're public or private or CID actually oh, or whether they're private. I need to work with you on that though, being able to differentiate what's CID responsibility and what's not. But all the lines are there as far as sizes and, and, and length and stuff, yeah. Okay. Size, type, and length. We can set up the CID assets and the private assets by different colors or something like that, or even as an attribute. Yeah, it can be broken down however, however I want, however they would like it to be displayed. Do you feel that this is useful enough to continue paying what we're going to end up paying? That he doesn't scare me nearly as much as the engineering fees. I can't forecast that. I mean, I, yeah, I gotcha. 
but most of the information we had have been, has been transmitted to with Bay already. Uh, the only thing it sounds like we may need to be doing is uh, getting in the information on what we believe are CID assets and what are private assets. Which I mean, it's in the there's the, the, the as far as like CID assets, we're referring to mostly um, stormwater, correct? Correct. We primarily stormwater. Okay, yes. and I mean there. I've worked on other CDDs that have a lot more. So, I mean, CID doesn't, Port of the Islands doesn't have a whole lot of, I don't see that being a huge effort, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. That's one thing. I, I would just take his drawings and take a highlighter and mark what's CID and what isn't. And okay. that's, yeah, that's not enough. So yeah. then if, when he's done there, if we don't show a drainage easement on Newport, that means there isn't one? And therefore, the CID isn't responsible for any of that stuff. We may not have the documentation to show that there is an easement. There may be an easement. There may be an easement by use. Uh, the, the, I, I have found easements for some of the drainage along there. Uh, there's some up by the boat, by the county boat ramp and so forth that I don't think I've seen anything on. So there may need to be either some additional research or an assumption that it is a district asset. Well, yeah. You know. but, but you're saying this is the future costs are once it's done. All, I mean, I, you know, you're not hitting this for. I know. I'm being completely honest. No, all the all the hard work, all the money up front is getting it created and building it. Right. And then, as far as if you want to add something, it's just whatever time it takes me. That's it. That's how I operate with all the other CDDs I have to work with. We're not questioning you. We're not questioning your ability. No, I'm just explaining. Like that. I just yeah. want to make sure yeah. we're on the same page. Yeah. One of the communities that he does this for uh, is much larger than POI. It's uh, 2,000 homes and uh, maybe $400 a year. It's just, and that's just updates that was requested by the board. And maybe it's that. We can't give them the information because it doesn't exist. Right, that, and that's that's part of this exercise is, is getting to figure that out. Because I'd rather us spend the time now and effort to see what's available, what we can get our hands on, and be able to come back and tell you, hey, we found it, we got it. It's going to be a GIS. You guys are going to have access to it, or it could be like, hey, it just doesn't exist. Okay. So that's part of the effort as well too. And I'd rather us go through this full exercise than you not know at all and in the future of course like when parcel 13 comes on board a lot of that information can be transferred directly into the system using uh, gis information as built surveys that the, the engineer record would supply to the district any questions for him it's going to locate all those easements for the drainage we've been working on drainage for a long time years and it's a big part of it just knowing what you're yeah. responsible for yeah we have no, I, I, I go through this exercise with all of my cdds I'm this sure isn't know. this isn't my first rodeo with you right. guys so right. Right. i know where you're coming from and uh, it's a big part of it uh being able to research all those plots reading all the dedications knowing what you guys are responsible for or not right. and it, it's so like i said it's a work in progress and i'll and i'll keep I'll keep a bug in David as much as I can and see if we can get that figured out for you guys. 90% of the, the, the assets pretty easily to define the box to what. I would say the challenge is probably along Newport and then probably a little bit along Union. Okay. Anything else? I'm not really can you I'm give us your name, please? I'm sorry, Lynette Brooks. I dealt with CIDs in County Florida, and I can tell you whenever they first implemented them, when they first came out in the 90s, there was a lack of communication between the people in the Community Development Department and the engineers. They weren't talking. You were going down a path to do, so a lot of these documents are not going to be engineered documents. They will be in the clerk's office. I went online today and tried to see, you can't read them. You will have to go to the clerk's office and actually pull them. But there's a plan and documents of just about everything you're talking about. It's just a case of taking the time to go through it. But the engineer doesn't know about it because they were never told. 
I mean, it's a public document, but it's a fact we don't communicate. It would be nice if we as a community could do a lot of that research without going through our engineer to do it. Because he's busier than heck with Sanibel and whatnot, and we've got the talent here to help him do that. And actually, most of the information is available in-house for us. In your house or in our house? Probably in the district record someplace, but yeah. I've got it set up in binders uh, as far as all the plans that have been filed. Uh, the site club with plan approvals on uh, most of the developments. I, I am a little sketchy on some of them along along uh, Newport, the case area. Okay. Should we move along? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate if, it. If you have a card, I'd yeah. like to see one. And then I will call you too to just make sure everything's going and you have the information that you need. And if we have other citizens that might be able to assist you, whatever. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. His uh, bill has been held in the police. Yes. Okay, that takes us up to landscape maintenance. Okay. Uh, we'll build road generator cost update. We got that, I guess, in our item uh, 9B, the Wellfield Road and Generator costs. Uh, that we're working that all into the grant for the FEMA reimbursement. So that's good. Did you have any, Kevin? Oh, you still speak. I'm sorry. But are you done? Are you done? Okay. All right, on, on landscape, uh, Soto has uh, taken care of the irrigation and uh, small detected zones on Newport and Caves Drive. Uh, broadleaf application was applied last month, prepping it for the spring application. Two holding areas that the plant are now drying will mow next week uh, before the rainy season. The mulching has been complete. Uh, we did notice there was a large truck. Uh, parked on a sidewalk and the sidewalk has been broken down. We've uh, took note of that license plates and everything. We're going to keep that on file as uh, we move forward uh, uh, notifying the entrance. Uh, we've noticed that there was two street lights over here at Orchard Cove that are out and one on Case Drive. We're going to get the numbers off the pole so we can report them. That's all I have. I have one thing on landscaping. When they clean the berms over there by the water plant, the sewer plant, but there's some big trees that are in on the berm and in the inside the berm themselves. Some larger trees that they can shake down. Um, might look into that. That's got an issue to clear. And yeah, that's near the water plant. Uh, it's in the one to the north. The water plant. Yep. Uh, Catherine Kellmeyer, Newport Drive. The pots um, over there by the real estate office still have not been weeded, uh, cleaned up. They're still located. Are you talking about the ones that would just be on the south side of the Red Bull building or more than that? No, there's what, four or five great big clay pots that have agave in it. No. And there's weeds and flowers and dead spikes on the bottom. They just need to be cleaned out. I know I went over there myself and I did pull some of those weeds out, but I had a hard time telling which. You know, if there's flowers, you don't, yeah, a weed no. is flowering, it, I don't know the difference. It's obvious just one basic plant that comes out in different uh, restored ground. Okay. It's only one plant to a pot, unless it has pups. Okay. Um, we, can take care of that. we can take care of that. Could we get you to come over? And sure. We'll help you get that I, the way you I want would, it? I would have done it, but I didn't want to take it upon myself. Do it only because I didn't want any other owner here taking things upon themselves. So, by all means, Steve, contact me and I'll meet you over there and we'll handle it. Perfect. That's, that's, the, that's the way to do it. Good. All right. Now we're going to move into the, the new agenda oh, where we're paying for the palm tree trimming and all that. Bring that up. Okay, item 10B. Uh, Soto uh, gave us a proposal. Uh, for 1083 for palm tree trimming at cost of $3,700. Item 10C, the proposal for 5995. That's the number of the proposal. 
for palm tree trimming on Union Road for $550. I make a motion that we approve uh, both of those. Any questions on this first? Any? Now, this past week, I went back to North Dakota and I brought should, should a- should get a second. And and then second yes. okay. I'll second. All right. All right, now I'll close the discussion. Good to go? Ready for okay. discussion. Yeah. Last week, I went back to North Dakota and I brought back a scissor lift, 14 feet wide, 14 feet long, seven feet wide, goes 30 feet in the air. If the community wanted to, this is something that we could do on our own uh, using my equipment. It's up to you guys if you want to have Soto do it or if we want to do it as a community. Up to you. You're welcome to use my equipment if you want to. And but that's up to you guys. Catherine? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I don't think it's a good idea only because of liability and insurance. Yep. I'm just throwing it just throwing it out there, I, but I appreciate your comment. Um, That's exactly what I was thinking. Is that if, it's, if you're doing, doing this in in your individual capacity, it's your call. If you're doing it on behalf of the district, then the district has exposure for any injuries that can occur. Okay. With regard to anybody using it, so that's something we we may want to double check with the insurance carrier as to volunteers uh, being donated scissor lifts because. Those can be interesting pieces of equipment for those who don't know how to use them, I'm sure. Let's, uh, let's take a vote on this then. All in favor of uh, accepting his um, proposal? Aye. 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 Okay. 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 You can move forward with that if you let him know. Okay. Thank you. And, and as part of that, uh, we, we need to notify the carrier, insurance carrier, get some guidance from them if the district is going to be. For the sponsor of this as opposed to you we just decided that we let soto handle it okay thank you and, and his individual bad not as a vendor of ours that's the question so so soto will do it as a vendor of ours, as, as a vendor. A vendor of ours. yeah so then yeah so okay thank you uh now we're to the engineering report right. well, you still got the other proposal b or c the one for five i combined those oh, together combined yes them? okay Uh, the first one I'd like to present is for the DEP renewal, and I'll pass these around. This is the uh, proposal and work authorization. Now, for those that don't know, DEP? Oh, Department of Environmental Protection. On the wastewater side, there's a requirement that every five years that your permit is renewed. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the update of the uh, capacity analysis report. Also, there's an operation and maintenance uh, component there, too, that there'll be an inspection done and uh, any deficiencies noted and so forth, any kind of repair items. It's, it's outlined on the third page of what uh, what our scope of services would be. Yeah, I read all that. I don't know if anybody else. Uh, you know, they're, they're just, uh, you know, some different things that do need to be submitted. Uh, we'll also, have, there's a groundwater component also involved that we have a hydrological <laughs> uh, firm. Uh, it's Omar Rodriguez. He's done some other work for the district, so he's very familiar with the uh, the groundwater here. So he'll be doing a groundwater monitoring report and so forth, uh, and assembling all the documents. Uh, there's usually a little bit of uh, give and take back and forth with first, uh, you know, getting things reviewed with the plant operator, and we can involve uh, uh, Dan in, in that also as far as the latest on for the utilities that he's familiar with everything. And, and there, there may or may not be meetings with the EP, and that's to be determined down the line as we go. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's typically it's a multi-month process. Uh, ideally, we you have to have the uh, application filed six months before your permit uh, expires. Like in June. Yeah. So we'll be working again in that. Uh, uh, the fees outlined there, and we'll be doing it hourly, not to exceed the uh, thirty-seven thousand dollars without. Unless something comes up unusual, we'll come back and let you know. But we, we I think we tried to anticipate most everything. You've done this in the past, correct? A yes, we've been probably least. doing it probably since 1992 or so. Can you give me an idea of what we may have paid in the past to have this done? Any idea? I, I, I think we pretty much have, uh, it's probably pretty much the same cost considering inflation to an increased wages and so forth since 92. Do, do you have any? 
input on that as far as having our DEP. Um, I don't know, if, do you work on that with any of your other um, communities? We do. Um, we work a lot uh, with our engineering firm, so mm -hmm. we do a lot of work with Paul Montez, among others. Okay. And uh, I mean, I'd like to get some background and some understanding on it and maybe. Uh, so, should we, you, you think we should hold off on uh, approving this for till another meeting, or what, what are you suggesting? Uh, what was a date? What was your response to? that are you are you encouraging us to approve that at this point or? yeah the sooner we get started the better on this mm -hmm. uh, because it does take time and uh, we just want to make sure we get everything filed in time and uh, there's no issues yeah. uh, we, we do these on a regular basis we, we're doing uh, doing them for like higher County we're doing for Gasparo Island uh, we do it for some of the small a lot of smaller plants also so it's something that we do all the time you do it for the county yeah we do it for Kiger County Any, There's of course a lot bigger. Five years. Five years. Yeah. yeah, it's every five years. Yeah. The, the, the water system's a little bit different. They don't require annual permit renewals, but they do regular sanitary surveys on the water system. Okay. Mitch, you familiar with these? Yes. It, all of my facilities have them. Correct. Every, every, five, every years. five years, they run about the same costs. Yeah, I don't really know price wise, but um, I do know they do them um, not only here, but several of my other facilities. So, okay. if I may ask Mr. Chairman, just one question. Absolutely. David Oven, the 37,000 is 6,000 to another vendor, looks like 6,750. Yes. Explain that to the board. Yeah, that, 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 that's uh, going to the hydrogeologic firm. Uh, it's Omar Rodriguez and his company's. I can remember it. I don't know. He he has been a geologist here though, as long as I can remember. And he, he is like the geologist in South Florida. Yeah. So he carries a lot of weight with the DEP if that matters. Is yes. there a markup? Are you, are you getting like a management fee or administrator fee or subcontract? Well, for the work? Let me check. Normally we don't do a markup on that. It's just a pass through. It's usually just a pass through, and that's what we do with all our subs when we do get them involved. Down here and for the islands, we, we don't do a markup. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see that noted on here, and I don't have a copy of his proposal. It's a good point, though. But no, no, typically we don't do a markup. Okay. So and we use our standard Collier County rates. That's something we've been doing for a long time. Whatever the Collier County approves with their annual contracts with us. Uh, which is again like a three-year contract. Uh, we we just duplicate that down here to be fair to you. We okay. don't use a special fee. Thank you. The question for the board is: Are we comfortable authorizing this up to thirty-seven thousand dollars, or do you want to do you want to do any research on? It? Is a one-month delay on this going to matter too much to you? Probably not. Probably not. But so it's just a big number, you know. I'm not saying that you're not absolutely right. great at doing it. I'm just. Do you do all the water plants for the county? Uh, we we don't do the water plants again. They 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 don't have to have the five year permit renewal. Uh, I'm gonna say we probably do the bulk of them. Yeah, we do uh, the North County. We've done the North County, the South County. Uh, I don't think uh, we've done anything with Golden Gate, the new plant they acquired there, or the work they're doing up at the uh, Northeast Regional Facility, but that's brand new also. So we need some more input. How do you feel, Kevin? I, I think it's in line. That's my personal opinion. Okay. How about you? Um, I'm fine. I'm fine. That means make a motion then. That means stay with what we've got. And I mean, if he's doing the county work, you know, if they're doing it already, and we got to get this done. We do it. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah, we don't have a choice to get it done. Right. So, I mean, I mean, we're not going to cut 
the bill in half if we find somebody else. You know of course not. Mean? So it's just I mean, to understand. We're, we're, we're probably nickel and dime in this. We should probably let it go. Okay, then let's make a motion to uh, authorize that. I make a motion that we approve the, the work authorization. I'll second. For the POI permit removal. All in favor? Aye. 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 We made a promise to everyone that we would um, bid out and get competitive bids on as much as we could. But I think we're pretty much in line on this, and I don't know if it's worth it to go up there and try to find that. Yeah, Mr. Truckee, along with five, I think for the board support, this is some backup. Be any new firm, first of all, be a time frame to try to get one into your sign up. Right. And also, they'd have to do data again. And I don't know how much data that David already has at his fingertips that that you should perhaps organize and generate. And Absolutely. Not, and, and if the hydrogeologist is the guru of hydrogeologists, but they may utilize that same individual because sure. with the agencies, as you know, it's a lot of times it's the relationship and the credibility. So I think the board didn't want Here again, it. it's no reflection of old Montez. It's just yeah, I'm just we're doing our due diligence. Yeah, that's that's all do. I think that's additional support. Right. There's, there's, there's 200 hours of work listed here, so I mean that's quite substantial. So you know, there's, I mean, to have somebody else come in and line all that up and estimate it, it's, yeah. and we have to do it by July or whenever the hell we got to do it. End of June, June, June. right? So, um, can you bring us up to date on the water tank? Yes, let me pass this around. This, this is a draft proposal. I don't have the dollars yet. I'm waiting on some dollars to come in. Plus, uh, one, one question that I do have, and I'm waiting on our lead planner to get back to me, uh, it, is, it has to do with permitting at the, uh, at the plant site itself. Uh, what we're looking at doing, uh, the first part, I, I described the scope of the project. We're, we're looking to go ahead and build a new tank. That tank initially will serve as a water potable water storage tank mm -hmm. that will allow us to get the repairs done on the existing tank. And then after that, the concept is to convert it over for use as a fire irrigation tank to add capacity that uh, Mitch was talking about, that he, he would really like to have some added capacity in that system. And, and then what, would be not, what we're looking at doing is plumbing it that in five years when we need to take the uh, water tank offline again and have a detailed inspection done, we would flip it over again and use it for portable water. It'd be basically a, a flip tank. And that's that's the concept. How much do you suppose it would cost to switch that, clean that tank and switch it over to be potable? You know what I mean? Each time that you switch it from drinking to... Well, switching it from drinking to the fire irrigation, we don't need to worry about it too much. Oh, we're not going to do that? Ever? Well, we would, we would, but that doesn't really take a lot of prep time. Because we're going to do that when we're building, it's, right? It's when we flip it the other way, when we need to bring it back for use for potable water, then what we need to do is go ahead and get it drained down, and we can drain it down by pumping it out into the system, and then getting in there, and uh, we've got to clean and disinfect it, make mm -hmm. sure it's suitable for potable water use at that point. So there also would be some costs because if we need to have some air gaps, basically, I'm going to call them air gaps. What we would do is valve on both sides, have a removable piece of pipe that when we're using it for fire irrigation, there's no way there's a cross connection back over to the water system. Do you have any idea on lead time for that tank? We, we, it, it needs repair, but uh, it, it's, it's not like something that needs to be done tomorrow. No, what I'm guessing is if you ordered it, how long do you think it would take? Oh, uh, we would probably need to bid it competitively, and there's two ways that we can bid it. One would be just uh, basically the steel tank option. Uh, I, I'd really like to try to get the, the Aquastore type tank, the, the blue one that we got up there, mm -hmm. similar to that, put in there. Uh, however, bidding it competitively, we may need to open it up for the option of having a concrete tank put in. Again, just to make sure we got some good pricing. Uh, either way, they would have tops on them. Concrete tanks are quite a bit more money, are they not? Usually, usually, uh, are, especially at this size. What kind of liner do concrete tanks have in them? Uh, typically, they're just concrete for the most part. I don't think we really do. Usually just concrete. I do see some times now they're spraying that NSF approved epoxy coating. And right. Okay, the right. only reason I ask that is because not everyone switches their tanks back and forth. Right. And concrete would be a, a much uh, force material, yeah. more involved. Yeah, 
job to switch it back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we definitely yeah use a coating on epoxy coating type yeah. material. The yeah. aqua score tank he's talking about, the metal tank, they'll build that tank in weeks compared to most of the concrete. concrete. Yes. Okay. I would like to make a motion that we um, start this process and and get it going. Let, let me first finalize a few things and present this back to the next at the next board meeting because I don't have any pricing or anything for you at this point. Well, I just said, meant that you would go forward oh, yeah. and do the pricing and, yes. and let's start yes. the process. Oh, are we getting another bid? Absolutely, that would be part of it. Uh, well, well, we'll bid the construction at this point. How how soon could I get a bid on this? Okay. Getting a price? Yes. Uh, from, from, from from us? From three from years. Well, well, okay. well there's, two, there's two stages. First, it's okay, going to be the difficulty. when you're talking about the state of Florida's competitive consultants negotiation act. Any planning or study activity involving professionals such as landscape architects, engineers, architects, mappers, and surveyors, anything that exceeds thirty-five thousand dollars for planning or study activity, you have to competitively solicit proposals. They're not compensation. That would if include him. Correct. And if the cost of construction of a project is more than, it's up to about 500000 now. Uh, so it's $4 million now. Is it $4 million for large projects? It's $4 million, and I think it it's, made, it's quite a bit more as far as the engineering designs and so forth and studies. So you may not need to, and you may not need to do competitive solicitation. You may just give solicit proposals, but they would not be compensation based. I, can I could I get a projected cost sort of from David? From David, he's your district engineer, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but I'm the only reason I have to about this because I have to have some final numbers going into a grant soon, and they don't they don't have to be final, but I have to have a ballpark an analysis of what it's going to cost. Yeah, to put that. in the grant. Okay, we can provide that. For this, uh, give you some budget pricing. We've already got some budget pricing mm -hmm. from the vendor, uh, from a vendor to go ahead and put a class line tank there. Okay. And we, that, that we can get pretty quickly and so forth. Uh, as far as like this proposal though, I'll go ahead and finalize those numbers for the next board meeting, get those to you. And then we can also work on going ahead and getting some budget pricing put together. Well, the budget pricing I'm gonna need in the next week or two. Okay. We probably need to sit down and talk about what exactly you do need as far as budget okay. pricing. It sounds like you might need some on the well field also. I will need a couple items on the well field. Perhaps we can meet after this meeting and go over those items and we can start pulling those together for you. Okay. That will be good. Okay, let's back up here just for a minute. All right. Because we were talking before, we were talking about replace, or getting another um, tank. Right? Yes. And eliminating some pump. Tank. All the pump stations on the canal. So, for okay. instance, I think you'll have to add a tank at the plant. There's probably a pump or two. I'm, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. But right. I would assume we need more than just a few pumps that are back there. Yeah. But originally, we were bantering, we're talking about half a million for the tank or something like that. Now, you threw out a number of four million. No, no, no. Four, four, no. four million has to do with the CCNA requirements. Well, David, I disagree with you because that's under the continuing okay. contract. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's only under the continuing contract section. So we'll take this. <laughs> well, no, I meant yeah, the whole project. Yeah. I mean, it no, sounds no. like it was going to be more no, no, than no, 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 no. That was when competitive bidding. No, that four million is for continuing contracts, not for other construction. We're we have half a million. Well, you, you're going to look and give me some other pricing, but supervisor just would like to know. Or, I just need to rid four million dollars in my main my family. You know, I mean, so no, no, no. It's it's not construction. It's not going to cost that. And again, that four million only comes into play for continuing contracts. Okay. Not for each individual project. I know that's why your firm could do it if, if you're the district engineer. Under continuing contract, right? But if the board were to go out to solicit proposals for engineering firm services for anybody else, then if the construction cost exceeds about four hundred fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, then you'd have to go to the CCNA. So I don't know if you have an estimated cost. Wait a minute, wait, back up. CCNA? What's well, so Competitive Negotiation Act? That's where the board solicits proposals from engineers, architects, mappers, surveyors. 
into qualifications based concept. They submit their qualifications, the board ranks the top three, negotiates compensation with the top one. And if the board cannot come to a resolution or agreement on compensation, then they go to the second rank, then they go to the third. That's how professional engineering architect, landscape architect, uh, service are provider. But Paul Montez is a district engineer under continuing contract, which is another whole category. That's why David's firm could do it without having to right. have to walk through the yeah, and, and, and for instance, like if the construction cost was going to be over four million dollars on any one particular project, then you'd have to go out and seek Correct. additional proposals. Okay, so you're you you're saying here that if we didn't have a district engineer, right, we'd have to do this every single time. Correct. You can you have a choice. You could either it's under four million. You could just say, David, go ahead, your firm do the design. No, no, no. I mean, say, say we did. You want to use had, another firm? Yeah, well, did not have a district yeah, engineer. Yeah, say we didn't have a district engineer. I mean, well, then we I didn't have one on. That's on not board. hypothetical, I would recommend, quite frankly, for the situation because uh, if you did not have a district engineer and if you're engaged in a construction project or activity that was over the threshold, which I think is about five. What it is, it's a number that you increase the cost by the engineer's news record building cost index system. Okay, formula. Uh, then you have to go out and competitively solicit proposals for engineering services. So it's going to delay everything. It's going to, everything's going to... Yeah, by at least 60 days. Each time. So if I'm understanding this right, we can ask him to go ahead and do our engineering. Yes. When it comes to actually purchasing the tank and doing the work, we need to get competitive bids. Yes, you find the cost of that. Yes. It's and, and, I, and I would prefer we would do that anyway. Probably the business practice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what we would do. Okay. That's the one. Okay. Any other questions on that? No. So next month I'll bring a firm price. Okay. And I'll talk to you in between. Yeah. That's all I have, unless the board has some questions, concerns, issues. Board reports. Um, you were going to send out a master plan. Did you ever get that sent out? On the swales, Dave, some areas are permitted, others are not. There's a master plan available. Um, have we already talked about that, or is there a master I we, plan? I think we've talked about it in general. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I said it, something. It, I, I can I can I can quickly gather that up as far as. A, and where I'm getting this from was uh, the minutes of the meeting from January 20th. Uh, I think I was going to get. Dave will send a plan to uh, Supervisor Hansen, and I'm just wondering if that was done. No, I have not caught up with Supervisor Hansen. Can we do that? Sure, I've got that noted. I I, I picked that up too when I was looking at okay. the minutes. Okay. All right. That was something that hadn't been done yet. Yeah. All right. Fortunately, my my life is getting back to some normalcy. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm down to 50 hours a week. All right. Okay. Um, anything else for uh, engineering? Anybody out there got any questions for, on, for our engineer? All right. Mr. Chairman, would you want to go back to the management contract? Or not? I, or you want to wait till the end? Whatever. That's fine. I think it might be helpful now, but we'll still make Kevin stay. I would suggest. Okay. I'll be honest with us. It's a long time. Uh, what I have in. Uh, Mr. Gerald's firm provided a form of an agreement. I made some edits to it. He came back with some responses, and then I reviewed the responses and agreed with some of them and disagreed with others, and he accepted that. We have a form of an agreement. I think you've seen it, Mr. McNamee. Uh, and uh, so it's recommended for approval uh, from the standpoint of form and legal sufficiency with a couple of minor, uh, I'll call it grammatical myths or edits as far as formatting, and then the e verify language needs to be added. And the, the operative primary, <clears throat> I just sort of read sort of the highlights, if that's okay, uh, the chairman. Oh, yeah. The uh, agreement commences uh, and the effective date, which I would suggest be uh, the 18th of February. And then it uh, terminates September 30th, 2023. And then it automatically news for one year term commencing October 1st, 2023. And then automatically news for every year thereafter. Uh, unless either party gives notice, at least 60 days written notice in advance. Uh, 
of determination. There's a, there's a little typo there also. Then the, it talks about the uh, conditions, the usual uh, obligations, perform all the services incidental to a district manager under 190, and, uh, and also is directed by the board for various activities. Uh, protect, maintain, repair, and replace the district's properties and assets uh, provided by statute, provided in the agreement or resolution of the board, you know, subject to very, uh, section five, talks about below, limitation of expenditures to purchase services and services or supplies, pay bills, obtain the necessary insurance, prepare meeting notices, reports and notices required, uh, and all those items with regards to typical obligations for the meetings, uh, maintain the fund, fund accounting system, budget, prepare a budget, and timely submit the approved budget to uh, Cuyahoga County and to the property appraisers. Uh, and then assess the role preparation and uh, maintain the official books and records and records of proceedings. Deposit, uh, keep all funds in qualified public depositories, which is required by statute. That limitations on expenditure, the, uh, another tip is otherwise specified by the board by resolution. The manager will have the authority to enter into contracts for maintenance or repair of district facilities. Uh, if the maintenance repair cost does not exceed $5,000 for the maintenance or repair event, the total maintenance or repair cost paid to any one contractor does not exceed $20,000 in the aggregate during the then fiscal year, and the proposed maintenance or repair cost falls within approved budget line item. So, I think, and then emergency repairs could be performed. And I've always taken the position district manager has an obligation to, it, it, it requires his duties to protect district assets in case of emergency. He has the ability to perform and engage necessary contractors for emergency services and typically consultation with you know, uh, the, man, the chair and then ratification by the board. And that's important also for FEMA uh, to have a resolution that approves that kind of emergency expenditure because they want to see the board approve the entering into contracts for emergencies or ratified by the board at a public meeting. Uh, FEMA has kicked out uh, reimbursement requests for not having that authority. So we just Kind of tuck that away to make sure we take care of that. Our relationship with parties, uh, insurance, professional liability insurance of a million dollars, we name this additional insured, uh, commercial general liability coverage, and uh, everything else is the, the, the expense. Let's see here, $7,500 per month, I think, is the fee. And Kevin, are there any additional fees in addition to the $7,500 fee? Uh, the only thing would be if the board desired to have ex extra services, whether it be project management, field management, anything that the board decided they wanted to add as an as, as an extra. Service. How about utility building? How's that going to be handled? Uh, the utility building services, uh, we've already uh, met with a vendor that will just pass those, so we'll just pass the cost along of uh, of putting together the, the uh, utility bills. So that'll just be a pass through expense. There will, there will be no no profit or administrative fee to our company. It'll just be a pass through of the actual cost. Do you have a number for what they're going to charge to do that? Uh, we don't yet, but uh, they haven't given it to us yet. But we'll have it soon. Because we need to do that, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We, we actually we're talking with three different firms. So. Uh, yeah, if we can just make sure that that's in the specifications as far as the scope to engage necessary vendors to. Uh, provide you know, generate provide so how are we gonna, building. how are we gonna go about getting that done before the next meeting because we're gonna need to send out water bills we'll have to put together we'll, we'll have to get the calls and I don't know if there's a way that we want to address that to, to, to today or uh, we, we just we have you know, we're just now getting the agreement done absolutely but, uh, so uh, we'll have to get that uh, this as soon as we can and well, uh well i guess the, the question is do you have any any range of dollar numbers for the utility building vendor is it five thousand per billing or ten thousand per billing or i don't i can try to find that out in the interim while we're working on something else well yeah i think that might be important because the board could say if you authorize <clears throat> you engage a vendor to do the utility building at not to exceed x number of dollars per billing cycle I don't know. so if we want to get that done here's here's a thought could we um could we agree to have one of the board members work directly with them 
and see what the uh, uh, the costs of the the billing will be and authorize that board member to um, make that happen before the next meeting. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with that process. No? I, no, no, what I would suggest would be if Kevin can get some numbers now so we have the board has an idea of the magnitude of that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, I think it's better to have that application. The board can say not to exceed number of X or Y, whatever the number would be. So, what was the bill in the now? Uh, in India? Is, I think it was uh, 2400. But there's more than just sending out bills, preparing and sending them. There's daily uh, customer service. Uh, we've laid off our billing clerk, and so I'm handling all the calls, and I probably get 10 calls a, a week. Uh, it's applications for new service. It's, it's filling out a termination form. It's the ACHs. It's uh, checking Mitch's guys goes through. They send us their readings, and then we have to go through all of them and then uh, send them back to Mitch for rechecks. And, uh, you know, so I mean, it's just, it's not as simple as what I think you're getting bids for. There's a lot have, of work there. I have another customer that just hired a billing company and the rate that they're paying is $4.25 per meter per month. $4.25? $4.25, that's two. Answer the phone calls. Um, take care of the reading. Of course, we read and send them the information, and then they print and send out the bills. How many meters do we have? Do you know? Almost 800. 800? Okay. Mid 40 is about 1030 to 200. Do they also put the money and transmit yeah. it to the have to exceed four grand. Why not extend? Okay, so that cow for a month. Mitch, I think, Mitch, no, no, thank you. Uh, Mitch, I think, <laughs> Mitch, I think Mitch is claiming to determine that that company that they have another client with. That they that entity does the billing, receives the funds, and then transmits the funds to the utility. Is that correct? That's correct. All for that same cost. That's what I understood. It was it was four twenty five per meter per month. And then handles customer service like we're just talking about. All In conjunction time. with us, like right now, Cal and I. Cal gets some calls and he sends them to me because we have to go out and verify, and then ultimately we have calls all day long that. Or about billing that we don't know, so then I have to pass those off to Cal, so it kind of works back and forth. But yes, Mitch, but, how big is that community that has the 425? Uh, 1200 customers. 12, well, 1200 customers. There are some condos that are billed like one bill for eight units. They're master so. meter, yeah, master meter. So I, I don't know the exact number, <laughs> but this number is $3,400. Mm -hmm. And the the customer that I just that I'm talking about they're only sewer only they are not water they're only sewer yeah so that's quite that's a lot but that that's just one I, I don't that's the only one I'm familiar with it, it, it's that that with, uh, sewer only is off the water meter reading that's it is a water meter. meter yeah so the county something. supplies the water and they may supply the reading over Kevin would you be able to take the calls for this specific billing no we uh, I think our expectation was that since and, for, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mitch, that the readings were done last week, yes, and that the last billing will probably be done prior to us taking over, and then we would take over from there. I understand that's not what's happening, but uh, that's that's where we are now. Is we're awaiting a proposal from the companies uh, that we talked with uh, Mitch about to, to get quotes. I would assume we're going to get quotes similar to what he's to telling us, but we don't have it yet. Uh, we're more than willing to do whatever we need to do. Uh, I'm just, to I just want to be careful given a okay. number. Cal offered to prep and possibly print. Yeah, we will. It would print. Okay, prep and print the bills. All we have to do is mail them out. And we have this billing. Well, done. stuff them too. They stuff got them. to stuff them. Stuff them and mail. got to put postage on them. And then I think hopefully part of that process would be also to get Electronic data of all those bills so that when payments sure. are received, yeah. so that's, that's <laughs> part of the record. Yeah, right. So, uh, and one of the reasons that we'd agreed number one, you asked Dan, and you know, that's why we're doing it, but 
Mitch with the issue on the bad reading from the testing laboratory uh, asked if we could put a message on the bill and I'm, I'm not sure anyone could pick that up at this late hour so we're, we're going to put that on direct them to the website and then give the 800 bills to uh to whoever you designate carol with that just with that bill indicate how payments should be made how is it made now is it, are the payments made to the port of the islands the CID? payments are made to a post office box no as far payment. as the payee though if, they're, if it's by check yeah no it's made to the port of the islands okay catherine are, are we planning on going to board bills every month or keeping it at every two months as far as i know we're at two months every two months every two months because mitch was talking about 425 a month so for, for billings that utility bills monthly so uh, and yeah. the bills might go out every two months but the work is constant oh yeah absolutely. Right. yeah right but i'm looking at for this particular time frame where we're changing over if cal printed them and we had to stuff them and mail them that's something we could probably get done we can get it done i'm sure we can All right does that work yeah, what do you <laughs> got to do what we got to do? Got to do absolutely right. So you would print them and then tell us. Okay, we'll give you 800 bills. Uh, if what you're going to have to do though is drive to Port Myers, because uh, that's the post. We don't know what post office box other than the one that is currently being used. So somebody has to pick up those utility bills. It's something I do every day. Can we do a change of address on that? Uh, you got to get a new post office box. What do you make? Yeah, I we're gonna have just set it up. I, if you can set it up like quickly, we can make the change on the bill where it'll go to a different. There's also a return envelope in there. So it's the bill, the return envelope, and the envelope. And the envelope, the, the return envelope has the address. Or, the post office. Box. So, we got to establish a post office box for us, and then we'll just do a change of order and we don't have to go through any of that. And what about the auto pay? That will turn over all the records, but that's something that somebody's got to do. They've got to get with uh, the people and get their bank accounts, get authorization. So, basically, there's going to be no auto pay this next time. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to get back to the I can't. We, uh, because my bill says right on it, do not pay this bill. Yeah, it's but I guess possibly the, the auto pay is to a bank account, right? And the bank account is the same account. We correct. Maintain that. So it doesn't sound like that would be an issue. Shouldn't okay. be changed. All right. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's still the same bank. Okay. And so, uh, I can volunteer Jack when he comes in every day. He lives in Fort Myers. <laughs> Pick up the mail. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Is everybody comfortable with this then? And I guess, You're Mr. Good? Chairman, it would be, uh, I apologize, no. that the spoken motion would be to authorize the chair to sign the management agreement with Durrell, uh, management group inc with the changes that I mentioned, with the recognition that there might need to be an amendment or addendum to it at a future time, as soon as possible, to address the building record. You're comfortable okay. with the agreement? Yes, sir. You're comfortable with the agreement? Yes, sir. I'm comfortable with the agreement. Works. Make a motion. Make a motion. We accept the agreement as uh, provided by we have me sign it. our attorney. We have, me sign it. have you? Yeah. Authorize the chair to sign. Yeah. I'll part we'll authorize the chair to sign. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Cal, thank you for uh, printing those, by the way. Take care of that. Appreciate that. Field manager's report. Uh, you have a good thing. I'm assuming that you brought along some resolution to authorize the Thanks, signature Thank cards you. and the transfer to Durrell. Yes. Uh, the resolutions. Yes, I think. I, I haven't seen. Anything. I think right. Kevin does. You want to take a look at that, Jack? Uh, I've looked at them and. Is there any good form, Bill? Do you have any comments on this? I'm not going to look at it right now. Okay. Uh, 
comment. Okay, yeah. resolution for the bank account and then a resolution to designate its assistance. Do you have extra copy? Oh, no. oh, uh, yeah, the first resolution is to, uh, well, there's actually two resolutions. The first resolution is the one because we are now appointing additional uh, individuals uh, as treasurers and assistant treasurer. Uh, resolution 2023-02. We I, I suggest we just it's designating a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, assistant secretaries, a treasurer, and an assistant treasurer before the Allen's Community Improvement District. And what I would suggest is that the chair and the vice chair if else remain the same. You know, all we're going to add is the uh, treasurer and assistant treasurer. And Kevin, uh, who would be the uh, the treasurer? Is your suggestion? Secretary of the Treasurer. The Treasurer. Would that be Neil or you or Assistant Treasurer? I thought we would both be the Assistant Treasurer. Okay, who would be the Treasurer? Who's, your, who's the current Treasurer? Yeah. Uh, I am. Okay, Civic Basic District Manager. So it would be Neil, yeah, Neil. And then Kevin Carter is the Assistant Treasurer. Yeah. So uh, the Chair, Vice Chair, and then the same the Secretary. They also Secretary. Oh, yeah. So uh, that would be Neil, I would suggest. And then Assistant Secretary would be all board members who are not chair or vice chair. And then also, I uh, think, anybody, you want Christopher to be an Assistant Secretary? Christopher? Sure, go on. Uh, you have myself. I'm sorry? You have me on there as well. You, that's correct. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we need that, Chris. No? Okay. So it would be the, the current officers, the current chair, current vice chair, Neil Doral, the secretary, all of the board members other than the chair and vice chair as assistant secretaries, Kevin Carter is assistant secretary, Neil Doral is treasurer, and Kevin Carter is assistant treasurer. Sounds good with that. And it would be uh, resolution 2023-02, and we recommend uh, that that's available, be adopted and approved by the board. We need a motion and a second. I make a motion that we adopt resolution 2022. 2022 as outlined. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next resolution is 2023 01. The Bureau of Management Group is directed to establish a local bank account. In which bank? Uh, we've used First Foundation Bank. Uh, banks for a variety of reasons, but. Uh, the interest rates are really low at that bank. I'd be willing to share that information with the board at any time, but that's the bank that we use. Why, why, why don't you put Valley in there, which is their current, and just change the signature card, uh, and, and then they can switch it whenever you want. I think that's a good idea. I, I doubt it, but if the Valley doesn't charge any bank fees, and you know they, they pay interest on your checking, which is a little over three percent right now. I don't. I haven't seen anything. And we, and we can leave that alone for now. now. Well, I think because we can change it later. I think Valley's appropriate right now. So okay. they are the the bank where all the ECH payments are made. Very and good. This, Very good. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah I agree. Right. And well, it says the district chair, yeah. treasurer, and assistant treasurer uh, shall be appointed signatories on the account. And so that way we have the new treasurer and assistant treasurer. So that would be on the signature cards. And take effect of time test. Can you tell any other comments or suggestions? We can, make, we can make adjustments as we go. Yeah. You can have another no resolution problem. subsequently. Yes. I have a question on, on the agreement. The agreement with Durrell uh, does state that they're the custodian of records, right? Yes. Okay. And we will ship all the records to their office? Yes. Okay. We have a motion for that? Well, the motion we accept that resolution. Uh, 23 23-01. Second. I'll uh, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I think we should turn. Uh, what I would suggest, uh, can we get back to the office if you could? Uh, if everyone fill in all the names, uh, email it to the chair. And then the, the, the 
you know, should also email it to me so we can include it in the record. Of mm -hmm. so, okay. that email it to the chair for the chair to sign, and then the chair we can send a color version scan back to uh, Kevin so that it can be signed by Neil as secretary or Kevin as assistant secretary, and then give a copy to you. Yeah. Both these questions. Sure. I think that would be appropriate. All right. And then, you know, you have, have you provided Neil or Kevin the contact information for the bank? Uh, I, I send it. If you could, you have a great yeah. I know. Thank you. Man. Actually, it's uh, Heather, and she's in Navy. Oh, good. Um, do we have any idea what's going on with our aerator installation? The uh, Chris uh, said they're still waiting on a permit. I didn't see it My question before. is, can we stop this process? I don't know why we're, I mean, we're going to be into the rainy season before these things are even going to go in. I mean, we've only been able to get conduit in the ground to one, to one uh, system so far. Is, have we got money put out there that we would not be able to get back? I can research that and get back to you. Or turn okay. that information over to. Uh, if the board would like to stop it, uh, we'll stop it contingent upon a full reporting of what has or hasn't been paid. Who's the contractor on this, we know? Uh, I want to say it's Solitude. Solitude? The total bid was like 20 grand, right? I thought it was that. Yeah. How much have we paid? I don't know if we paid anything other than the electrician that hooked up the, uh, the electric. He ran a conduit and all here, right? Yeah. I, 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 I'm not sure. It yeah, sounded yeah, sound yeah. like he ran a conduit, but the electric isn't yeah. in yet. The conduit's not even in on the rest of the pond. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all for kissing goodbye unless. You know, if we put some serious money into it, I mean, if we put 10 grand into it already, well, then that's different. Exactly. If we haven't put it, if all we've done is paid an electrician. Can you make a motion then? With, what kind of motion? That if we don't have a lot of costs out there, that less we, than what? Any idea what the electrician costs? Uh, it's, we can't get a ton. Fine. So. Solitude, you said was the name of the company? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Solitude could be anything. So that means all the but, but they're not the electrician. That means all we've done is pay the electrician, right? As far as I know, yes. So they are the aerators and that they can deliver. If they are, they're on the site, on their site. Yeah. I can't I can't believe they wouldn't have wanted fifty percent up front. You know what I mean? Once well, they started ordering the solid, solid. Solitude. They're national. They probably are twenty billion dollars in asset. The trouble with this is, we this has been going on for months. And stop it! Huh? Stop it! So, I, I would be in favor of that. I don't, Kevin. You're talking about putting the areas in the stop in the area, putting them in, put a hole. Yeah, I mean, if we if we haven't spent well, any money for the review. No, we gotta we no, gotta stop it so, so, so it goes away. You know, we could always go back at a later date and buy them again. You know, the Congress is going if we have one on one, one. So we only we only ran line for one. So you've got there's three, right. one in each yeah. pond. But we've only they've only done one. one. We've only right. Can I make a suggestion? Um, the gentleman that does the spraying of the ponds and maintains them. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Luca from the group card. I would suggest talking to him and getting his input as to how he feels about the aerators going in. Just a suggestion. Yeah. Thank I you. Know if he was ever contacted Thank you for that. Okay, well, I've been here 17 years and I don't see the need for him. So. so, you want to make a motion that we stop this? Yeah, I make a motion that we uh, hold off on the aerators pending at. Uh, as long as we haven't already paid for the units. Right. You know, and if we pay for the units, we'll have to readdress it. Absolutely. Second, anybody? 
I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 District manager's report. Uh, okay, well, we've got the financials and uh, all these are in great financial position. I wish my other communities had three million dollars in reserve. Uh, nothing jumps out at me. Uh, it uh, now these are you know they, they've been looked at audited whatever by an uh, CPA. So that's the January one. The we'll be turning over uh, what type of software do you use? Um accounting software is QuickBooks. Okay. Um we'll I it's probably adaptable. Uh we use a, a pretty sophisticated municipal accounting software. And I think we can give you everything in Excel. We've heard all the records and give it to you in Excel, but they'll be preparing your February financials. Uh, we'll give them everything up until the point you stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Are, are you looking to Tony for? No, I was background noise. Uh, oh, um, so we'll have that. We have all of the audit files that are ready. We've sent to, and the auditor is Berger Toombs. We've sent everything to them. So, you know, we'll provide the information right up until, but you'll have everything in an audit file that you can use to uh, communicate with them and get the audit completed. Uh, but the audit is also everything we've done. It goes to the end of September. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions on the financials? I can answer. No. Uh, no. Huh? Did you have any questions? No. I don't think we should go into it. All right. Um, the only other thing, a FEMA reimbursement, you'll okay. well, obviously you'll still on the financials, you need to accept them. But um, the other thing is several bills are still being held. The engineers, the attorneys, and ours. Uh, ours by contract is due immediately upon termination. And that's tomorrow. Um, make a motion to pay the the outstanding bills that we have. Second. You just got to sign it, don't you? Yeah, but we're authorized, okay. authorizing the pay. All right. All right. I'll second. I, wanna, I yeah. want everybody to say yeah. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. So, Cal, you can go ahead. We'll bring everybody up to date. Uh, yes, we'll bring everybody, all, all of them that we have. What about the last batch that we sent you? Um, are those all good? I believe so. I don't think none of them. So huh? we'll we'll pay all of the bills today that are outstanding, and then you'll just get the next ones as they come in, and we'll forward everything from our AP file to you. The only one that I really have a big problem with is that Carl's uh, that does our uh, waste disposal, our hail, our sludge away. Um, and I was talking to Mitch the other day, and he says we take about. 20 truckloads a year out of here. And I was looking at the last bill and they have a, a, a diesel fuel surcharge that was damn near $1,000. Um, and it, it, it's just way out of whack. Where is he trucking it to? India. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it wouldn't surprise me if it is adopted in Charlotte County. Well, anyway, well, Mitch says that it's way out of whack. They're trying to come up with a better way that they can, their company can be able to do it. But um, he says we can only use that company with the permitting that we've got. And basically, they've got us over a barrel, and they're just gouging us on this. Yeah, there, there's not too many companies that do that type of work. Yeah, Carl's one that most people are using. Yeah, and and. I, he was saying other communities have voiced the same concerns that 
these uh, these fuel surcharges have just gotten ridiculous. Um, you can compare to the people who bring in our chemicals, it's six dollars, you know, when they bring in a truck. Um, but I think that's something that we should be addressing in the future and working with Mitch to to come up with a, a, a better solution because uh, it's it's and and you can call them and complain, but it, I guess it just doesn't do much good. So anyway, I just want to. But a fuel surcharge is not unusual. It's uh, the Beatles were a fuel surcharge. Yeah, but uh, yeah, almost every one of your vendors. We're talking about one hundred and fifty-three dollars a truckload for fuel so surcharge. Truck. It's got what a six thousand Mitch left. I think yeah. it's got a six thousand gallon tank on it. Yeah. That they come in and they pump it and you know it probably burns. It may even be bigger. <laughs> yeah. Why? I mean, there there's just a lot of people with uh, fuel charges. There. I'm not saying the fuel that they shouldn't have a fuel charge. I'm saying 153 dollars. I own semis. I know what it costs to drive a semi down the road. That 153 dollars for not that's not to pay for the diesel. That's just the surcharge above and beyond what we're paying for. Mm -hmm. it, that's ridiculous. Maybe, Kevin, you can get an adjustment on that reduction or... We may have to look at the contract and see what the base is. Yeah. But yeah, $153 a truckload is, as a surcharge is ridiculous. But anyway, moving on. Okay, uh, and then I just, uh, this is my last meeting. I just wanted to, uh, you know, thank the community, previous board, this board for uh, the opportunity to be here. It's, I've been here quite a while and uh, I certainly have appreciated, or I, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. The water plant, we restructured the financing. None of that was, uh, and the sale of parcel 13. And uh, none of that uh, we charge you extra. It's uh, FEMA, uh, everything, you know, now this year we charge it for FEMA, but none of those things were ever an extra cost. We appreciate that. Okay. Um, did you want to Did you want to mention anything on the 2024 budget schedule? Uh, the 2024 budget schedule, that's just what we put together, but uh, uh, they will probably want to adjust it. Uh, the budget schedule that's in your packet is based off of the meetings that you have. Uh, unless you're, you're, you need to adopt a budget by June 15th, not a final budget, but a proposed budget. And when you adopt that, that limits the- you approve it. Yeah. You approve it and you adopt it later. You approve it for purposes of holding the public hearing. Okay, I didn't say that. You'll keep us straight. We're, we're good. I, we're I, good. I, I said adopt and then I changed it. Okay. I didn't get the change. Sorry. Yeah. So, Semantics. We'll get it done. Uh, so anyhow, that is a schedule that's that we would have proposed to you that uh, based on getting it done with no extra meetings. But you might want some extra meetings. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Tony? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Without going into the, the substance of the conversation, because it was considered confidential in formal settlement discussions, Mr. McNamee, myself, or Nor, my partner, not the paralegal for the record, um, and uh, uh, met by a Zoom that got cut off way too early, and that was very frustrating. But uh, with Mr. Preppen and his attorney, uh, and I think basically we sort of agreed to disagree at the present time, but I still think there might be an opportunity. I don't know, Mr. McNamee, how you feel. I, I, you know, I know their their attorney, and I listened to what he said. I was disappointed that he didn't seem to have a grasp on. Not going into the detail of what we're talking okay. about. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> I, I I think that he wants to take this to court. Okay. I'll be pleasantly surprised if he doesn't, but I think he wants to go the whole way. Okay. And, and right now we don't believe we Lenora, we don't believe. Uh, I think Mr. McNeil will agree. To be, tell me if I'm wrong. We don't need a closed door session for the next board meeting, not for the foreseeable future. I don't, I don't believe so. All right. Anything Mark, else? Let's see. Uh, form of resolution uh, establishing various committees. Uh, have you all thought about, again, the, the, the types of committees and the scope? I have a template. I think you all saw the template that I had. I handed it out. And if you just tell me, uh, maybe come to the next board with a list of 
each individual, what committees they think should be established, that they would be a liaison to, uh, what scope they want for the committee, what name they want to give the committee, and how many members I think should be on the committee, five or seven, because you know sometimes it's difficult to get a quorum if you have too many people on a committee. Right. right. Uh, some may be three, some may be five, uh, and that I think might be a good document also to be included in the agenda packet where those ideas could you know each board member could send that to the manager and put that in the book so the board sees ahead of time what the concepts are for scope, nature, and, and quorum. Okay. And we have said we have a, I'll call it a fill in the blank sort of template for the resolutions that could be easily uh, crafted after the board gives direction. Okay. And are we crafting these to be information gathering committees or are we crafting these? That's the question. I, I suggest that be detailed on how you believe a particular committee should be organized. I would like to see all our committees crafted as an information gathering committee. Information only. Yeah, I understand that. And recognize that it's extremely difficult to do, keep within the bounds of the Sunshine Law because they tend to wander off into having meetings where they start making recommendations and that's not their role and then they have to have, then they do have to comply with the Sunshine Law. That's, that's the difficulty and that, uh, as a community, I think if we agree to go to committees and get input from public and from the committee members right here to schedule all those committee meetings um, in this place or in another meeting facility and advertise them uh, to the papers and everything. No, they, they don't have to be advertised in the paper, the committee meetings. No. They can be posted on the district website. Okay. And they could be at your house. As long as, so, public, as, long as you have plenty of tea and crumpets available for anybody else. If we're doing information gathering, correct? Well, it's information gathering that you don't have the same issues, but again, Human beings being what they are, human nature being what they are, it's very difficult without constant monitoring and guidance to make sure they stay solely on information. And the information gathering is, I observed potholes in the road. These are where the potholes are located. I found this company, they're located in Wisconsin. Not, I found this company in Wisconsin, we recommend you use them. Then you're off to the recommendation advisory board. So it's, it's you know, if it's simply a, this committee, as a road and their goal is when they walk, ride, bike, whatever they want to do, that they make notes about road conditions and then send them to the manager. That's one thing. As opposed to the, the committee members then start saying, hey, we recommend you fix this one. We recommend you do that sign. Now you're in the advisory board. That's where the difficulty comes. What? That, that, well, that seems pretty complicated to me. And that's, like you said, that's not human nature. They're going to they're gonna bring stuff up and want to hit come up with solutions at the same right. time. So it makes more sense. I, I don't know about this committee thing. I mean, it, it sounds good, you know, say you want the committee yeah. house, but why can't they just bring us the information once a month? That's what I'm saying. Just let them bring, bring the information here. Just bring it to us. Just bring well, it to the board. Not as a committee, though. Not as a group, though. Be individual. Just right. individual. Yeah, you see something, bring it in. Okay. Because otherwise, it's, it's, it's too narrow. I think it's expensive, time consuming, and fraught with opportunities and I don't for know people who... to snipe with them. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Too. Anybody that doesn't like what they're doing is going to start saying bunch of violations, and then that's just we end up going down. So, so the interest in the interest of time, because I want us out of here by Sorry. Right. Let's table any more discussion about committees to a later date. Um, so then we're on to old business lawsuit update. I guess you just did that, right? Sure. Parking Park. parking signs and tow away. To my knowledge, nothing's changed. So nothing's I have nothing changed. more than that. No. We're well, doing we'll parcel 13 in your agenda packet was the latest submittal. I'm oh, sorry. Well, those parking it's signs it's that that's are, where we're at now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you were, I thought you were right. bypassed. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Write that now. I was rushing. Now, do so. you have an idea? Uh, Idea on that? I'm um, just past the marina. I don't know why we need them. That's that's what you're saying, right? Absolutely. To pull them out. Sunrise Pay, even right. The marina entrance, any place you have landscaping that you do or have a parking, it all has to do with people going in their driveway or down. Right. Uh, well, road. I think I think at the marina, in the median by the marina, because what happens on a weekend is the marina fills up, sure. and they don't all go down to the other parking lot. So then you catch one occasionally that's parking in the median or whatever with their trailer. 
I think right along that section, we, we need the signs. There's, going down the sections, you have the one that has the three shady ladies, and then you don't have anything that has parking signs. Then I think you have the three Bogan Bielica, and that's going into the marina and the firehouse in that area. Then from the marina entrance, back to where the um, water irrigation clock is, there's nothing there. Okay, but once you hit that irrigation clock right before Sunrise K, just right. about at the beginning of 333, right. technically at Sunrise K, not before K, the fenced area, from that point, from that clock, on back down to the end of Newport, it's ridiculous. But you do have that one span that is next to the marina that there's nothing there. So, two things. You can either put in some kind of landscaping in that area, Okay, so people will park like it would continue then from the marina on right. back or put the signs in that area where there is no landscape. Yeah, just pull the signs from the south end. Can I make, a, can I make a, quick, 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 a quick suggestion here? When I meet with you on those sure. plots, Absolutely. why don't you and I go and you tell me what signs you don't like and what I'm going to suggest is, just for the sake of time, that I go and pull the signs out we probably shouldn't need, and we store those over at the water treatment plant, and then um, if we have issues, we can go and reinstall them. It won't cost us anything to do. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'll, I'll be more to about that. Okay. All right. Rezoning of 13. Uh, in your agenda packet uh, was the latest uh, resubmittal, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions with regards to that, but... I also have a handout for today's paper one moment. for the uh, notice of the neighborhood information meeting. Grab the chair. Was, uh, was that on his thing? Yes. Okay. It's scheduled for March 7th at the Port of the Islands Resort Conference. We'll have extra copies. Yes. It was in today's newspaper. Can we uh, can we get this noticed and put on our on our website as soon as possible? So that the community is uh, made well in advance of what's going to happen on here. There's going to be a peer, hearing at the county dealing with the. With here, the it's going to be held here at the county. Okay. It's a neighborhood information uh, for the rezoning, which is required under the county plan development code. And um, it's, it has to be either audio tape or videotape. And you can do your own audio taping or videotaping if you wish. The typical will be there will be the attorney, the land planner, uh, county staff. Uh, making the presentation as per rezoning, and then uh, any the public can ask any questions they want, and any commitments made at the neighborhood information meeting called the NIM uh, um, will be commitments that will be in the documents for this rezoning. So uh, questions are asked, and the developer makes a commitment. I, I think that's what Mr. Yvonne and Mr. Francesca will say. Right. <laughs> when you say here, you don't mean more code, you mean over in the Correct. Yeah, right? it's, uh, kind of, it's right there. I uh, printed extra okay. copies out. It's on the table. That was in today's daily news. Uh, and not many people get the print version anymore, but I saw it in the online version. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry, Mr. Beck. Was there a reason that we weren't going to have it here? That's up to the applicant to set the location. And uh, we're just told does not allow anyone other than the CID and residents of Orchard to use the so Lindsay, you want to state your name and for those who I'm Lindsay Cakes, and I'm an archer sir of parcel 13, as you may know, and we were in adjacent to the 269 site that is now assembled as a given parcel. Sorry, I haven't heard anything sure about enough. the county and their piece of land and what they're doing. I have submitted, according to the board's uh, consent for me in December, as the new board had consented, and I submitted to the county for the zone of change. We received comments. I don't have that memo here, but uh, and they were pretty perfunctory comments, comments that are just kind of something that my team, the engineering team of Brady Minor, needed to kind of uh, rebrief. They resubmitted them, and then we also have to have this meeting. But it said it was March 7th. March 7th. Right, so I won't be there. I've got this team here, but uh, 
that after that meeting, then of course, as he said, the, any additional public comments will be brought into the documents. And I don't have much more to say other than um, we're we're on full throttle. I have directed my engineers to do some of the pre-design for some of the relocations, which you're aware of, David, perhaps. And uh, if there's any other comments, I'm here for that. Why do we need rezoning? Because the zoning only allows the resort uh, townhome type property. And the board was very, and I thought the community and myself were all really very well committed to the hundred million residential lots. What are the size of lots? Uh, if they're whatever we're on that diagram. That yeah, but that diagram I saw was 75 by 40. That might be what some of them are. But they won't, they won't fit. You won't fit a uh, 1,500 square foot house if you, depending on what the, uh, the lot lines are and the in the setbacks are. Yeah. All that's to be submitted. See, right now we don't have the the, the process doesn't ask for lot dimensions. It only asks for use. Okay. As soon as the zone, and they say, okay, the zoning's okay, but it's not completely arbitrary. And the maps that you saw may have been earlier revisions that were never refined, but I haven't, we, the team didn't spend, I haven't spent money on doing a flat design because you want to get right. the zone approved. And so, yeah, it frustrates me that we can't, I mean, if I was a of spending money on engineers, we would have had everything ready and submitted today and ready to record tomorrow. But because the county uh, needs, you know, I think their rule is 30 days to reply. Tony, is it that? So, yeah, typically. I think as you submit and they have 30 days to reply, then you submit again and then they go to public meeting and then they come back and then they, and then I have to submit comments again. Is there is there anything that we as a board can do to help move this process along for you? I just wouldn't understand the not the, the political side at all, other than just um, I think if you're familiar with the county commissioner and the other persons that are related to the county, just share your input and please, if you have any issues, I know some still may have ideas that. May we're coming up in the contract period, but the thing I love about this deal, this investment, this community is we spent six months and I spent $50,000 just signing contract that we closed on. And because we spent that much money up front, we did deal and think about the engineering, the GIS, all these issues that kind of have come up and because this issues before this new development weren't able to quantify all the needs that would come but now we've kind of seen what are all the needs you learned about it with the gis process recently and i would and in addition to the hurricane that just went through there they were telling me the day the hurricane was coming through you're gonna have to raise your site <laughs> so i already had to hear that day one and we were gonna we have to raise at least a foot higher than what we were going to do and that's an engineering thing that as the processes that you're working on if you need to have integrative conversation with my with the engineer on it they're at the table every day with mr brady minor there i have them funded so that they can deal with any question your team brings up so it's not like hey they're calling to tell us we need to do another study on this I said, God damn it, I don't have the money for that. Okay, I'm here to fund this deal. I'm here to close the deal and get 109 lots built. And I'm here to give you the confidence, and I'll be here every meeting I need to be. And I flew in last night, I'm flew out tomorrow. But I'll be happy to stay a month. <laughs> and I do want to go out here. Are you gonna are you gonna have a chance to go over to the to the well site? Yes, absolutely. So Maybe if, if there's anybody in here, he's going to be over at the at the water treatment plant. If you got some questions you have for him, that'd be a great time to do it. Yeah, and I'm happy that I put three million dollars here. I'm committed. My whole life is here. If I were to die, my network is here, and my family would produce the output you need. 
It's all good. Mm -hmm. so yes, sir. Do you have any input to the county as to what they do with that parcel of land that sits between us and you? No, I, I have told them multiple times, uh, but yeah. not formally. I did it in an email. I said, I'd be willing to pay you the exact price for your land that I paid to this anytime. And the thing about it is their land didn't have water commitment. Their land has no water allocated. So that's a whole nother probably $300,000 of revenue to the district the second they want to come in and do 20, 20 units on it. I have planned their site. I have it fully integrated into a plan. If the, somehow the county does capitulate and want to sell to this program, I can whip out a plan in five minutes. And I mean, not five minutes, five seconds. It shows how we would use it if it were part of our system. And it's very congruent with the things that are the existing plan. Thank you very much. Um, those kind of questions we can ask yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, time. Time. Yeah, Go ahead. Two, uh, three things. What I would suggest is, if, even if a person asks some questions, in which case it would be very forthcoming, provides information today, I think they would still need to ask that at the neighbor information meeting. Yes. Because that's something on the record. So people who are not here today can also hear the responses. Of course. From the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, in the agenda packet was a last minute addition. And so I think. Kevin, if you all make it available on the website, is the resubmittal that uh, Lindsay mentioned, which talks about the applicant's response to uh, this particular matter. And again, uh, it's March 7th, 2023, 5 30 p.m. at the Port of the Islands Resort Conference Room, is the neighborhood information. Uh, and, please uh, come and support it. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and in, in, in the future, not today, but uh, if you saw the letter that we sent in, Cal, Dave, and I, Mr. McAbee, gave your copy of it. And I, think, I think the whole letter was in the submittal, was saying there is access, there is an agreement to reserve ERCs based upon a payment schedule, and that additional ERCs need to be acquired. So there might be an amendment to the utility ERC agreement in the future to get those additional, I think, 1.2 or 1.3. Right. Yes, as, as, parcel I bought. as a board. Attending this meeting, the name. Do we? I mean, are we able to Here's speak? Or I mean, I don't want. Uh, what I would suggest is I can put a prepared notice, and I'll work with Kevin and Neil on it. A notice that it is anticipated that two or more members of the district will be in attendance at the NIM. Now you will use the same language, and that uh, that meeting will be uh, recorded both audio and video. And then we would need to have minutes of that. They could be sort of summary minutes, okay. as far as what the board did at the meeting. And so that way the board members can be present, the public knows they're going to be present. NIMS have to be held in a publicly accessible meeting location. So that meets that test in the statute. So we're good. We as a board, we can go. I'll make a note to make that notice and run that by you and Kevin beforehand. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Glad Thank to you. see you again. Good question, Mr. McAfee. Thank you for asking that. Go ahead, Deb. Is this going to be Jeff Jensen? Room? I'm sorry. Is it going to be in the Egret room? It's just conference center. That's all. Yeah. Conference yeah. center. I don't know what that means. So yeah. just, yeah. It'll be in the hotel. Yeah. It's in the Egret room. I'm concerned it might not be large enough because I think there's going to be interest. Well, that's that's the on the applicant to accommodate the number of individuals that appear. And there have been situations where they've had to. Find overflow locations, or but that's on the applicant. That's not a district function. To make sure that a location accommodate all the people they believe are going to be attended. So, thank you, Deb. I hope you're right. I hope there's a lot of people there. Mr. Case, I've seen I've seen meetings overflow into the in, into the entry entryway or into the lobby. Let's call it into the lobby of the hotel. So, if you talk to the hotel people. The egret room isn't that big, I agree. It's got big double doors, though, so you could probably spill you out. Could, you it might have been something Francesca probably arranged. She yeah. probably doesn't realize how small you may it is. I'm just saying you, you may be able to fill yeah. into the lobby yeah. if you talk to the hotel. That's an excellent point because then Lindsay can go back to talk to his team right. and see if they want to basically, they may want to change location and or date or right. some other way of comment, like monitors or whatever they want to do. 
Sure. I think if they release this, we don't want to change location, but we'll just confirm the building can accommodate. And them. the ability for yeah. people to listen right. and participate. Yes. Okay. As long as they know ahead of time. That's on I mean, I want, I want that. You yeah. want, yes. because the more public record we have, the stronger everything is. Right. Even if there's a dissension, we can at least know what we need to be thinking about that we may be missed. So. Right. Thank, Thank you again. You. Thanks again. Um, the last thing is the swales issues. I'm going. Do you want him? I think uh, I'm going to be meeting with uh, Supervisor Hanson and okay. discussing that with her. Okay. okay. Um, I know um, Mr. Mess. I uh, spoke with him yesterday. Um, just to put it out there, um, they I believe already signed an agreement that says that that pipe that's in there swale there or that drainage area that if we have any issues with the what that whatsoever that it doesn't work in any way they will take it out or modify it whatever we decide so um i'm not just aware of the agreement huh? i haven't seen an agreement or been a part of it i will get you a copy of it if it exists then okay all right i'll make note of that uh, that's what i was told uh, there again i assume Okay, anything else on the swale for right now? Okay, new business, uh, the fire department thing. Um, Harry, do you have any ideas on what this no, thing I is? I recommend you call the fire chief to get it right in the course now. Okay. Yep. Well, and, and as a follow up, uh, I don't know how it got on the agenda to tell yeah, you the truth. Yeah, Zach only asked for it. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, don't, don't stop me anytime. I'm sorry. I may be able to help you on this one. Yeah, and also uh, uh, I have something, and, and Zach Lombardo, who, uh, I think you've met Zach, one of our attorneys, he represents and does work for Everglades City, and they're impacted also. And Zach participated by uh, listening, I guess, in a call between the county and Greater Naples on the 14th of February. Mr. Truckee, you may have more recent information. And then I can repeat uh, what Zach has told me. I'm just bringing that letter up right now from uh, Job Clark. Okay, we're under agreement. Um, I don't know if you can all remember when we got our fire station, there was a, a consolidation effort between Greater Naples and Wachapi Fire. And we were part of Wachapi Fire. As that went through the legislature to become an actual, um, where they took us in to Greater Naples, right? Um, a consolidation effort. As it went through, there's different thoughts as to what happened, but uh, Greater Neighbors Fire, Fire will tell you that uh, the legislature didn't go along with it and it was stopped. All right, so we didn't consolidate with Greater Naples. We ended up going under a contract with Ochoppy Fire um, through Greater Naples. Uh, the questions about the issues of why that happened, I, I believe, this is my opinion, um, that it became a money issue because right now we pay four mil uh, fire rate for, to have our fire protection. If you look on your tax bills, um, the rest of Greater Naples pays one mil, all right? So we pay about four times as much as they do because we're way out here, so to speak. So this agreement um, has to be renewed by April. Uh, and because it has to be renewed, it's being talked about now. So I was in a county with the county manager, assistant county manager, talk about some of the things we promised we'd look into, uh, whether we can consolidate some efforts um, with our community and the county. And one of the items that came up at the meeting from the county manager was uh, this agreement that's going on. Um, Greater Naples went to the county, they were getting $560,000 a year a subsidy from the county to have us in this Ochapi agreement here. Um, they have now come in for the new agreement and asked for 1.2 million in all new fire trucks. So um, it's more than double. The county has to uh, either, they have to either put up or the agreement falls apart. If we totally lose the agreement, we could lose our fire station, right? Because we're greater Naples at this point, and we go back to being part of the Oshapa Fire District. 
Um, they refer to that in here that if it doesn't go through, that, that it'll fall apart in a letter that was sent. Um, so it comes down to money. It really comes down to money. Whether whether the county will pay the extra money to keep the agreement as it is, and we continue to pay four mil, uh, in my opinion, we should really take a really good look at, at trying to get the consolidation effort passed through the legislature. If we can do that, um, we would probably go down to one mil, like the rest of Greater Naples. The county has offered uh, some type of an agreement to kind of uh, subsidize that for uh, maybe up to five years or something um, to help us make that agreement work. As they build out on 41, and the more houses that come into play down 41 around uh, the new public scat or supermarket and across the street and on the on the uh, what would be the east the west side of uh, six LS farms, there's land there that's going to be developed into houses. As those housing projects get closer to us, it is easier for Greater Naples to take us in at the same amount of money because when they come out of the fire station, if they turn left, they're going to help people that pay one mil on their fire taxes. And if they stay here, we pay four mil, right? And that can be worked out better with the existing fire stations as those houses build out. It, we become uh, more part of it rather than being way out there. So I guess at this point, I'd like to see us as a community get involved in this negotiating process. Uh, the assistant manager with the county has asked if, if we would do that, if we wanted to do that. And um, I would like to work on this. Um, I'm a retired firefighter from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I did uh, nine years as, uh, as a battalion chief and worked with the budgets and the county boards and the city councils, uh, the fire districts. We, we did some consolidation prior to leaving Green Bay. We, we took on a couple of the neighboring communities to Green Bay. And there are some issues that go along with that, especially at startup um, with your contracts and things that you end up getting into as you take in suburbs and things. But I think that um, I may be able to help out on this effort of trying to get us consolidated true consolidation with greater Naples. So that's where it's at. It's a money thing. I don't think we're going to lose our fire station. I think the county is going to put up some money to see the agreement go through, or better yet, if we could uh, actually push it through the legislature and become actually part of greater Naples, it puts us on a better um, platform to pay the same thing. There's only one other district in greater Naples that pays four mil, and that's up by Corkscrew Road. Uh, there's a section of the community up there that's paying a higher rate like we are. But I, as I believe the county manager stated, we're the only two that pay the higher rate. So when this agreement came around four years ago, when uh, this consolidation effort went through, that was kind of the goal to get us on the same rate. It would lower our fire taxes that we all pay. Um, but that didn't happen. Uh, so. Excuse me, Dan. You said so the state legislature has to be involved in this? They do. They have to approve the agreement. And there were some issues there. Not sure if the legislature had that many issues or if uh, Greater, Greater Naples saw the dollar value in not becoming consolidated because I believe if the county manager said that he didn't think there was anything um, by law that that allows for two different tax rates once we're, if we would be um, consolidated with Greater Naples. And if the consolidation didn't go through, then, then they can keep our rate at four. So I think it comes down to a money thing, we really do. I, for one, hope that we do keep this fire department because I know two people, and I'm sure there's many more, that I know personally save their lives. We okay. have had to wait almost a half an hour for you know PMS to get here. I don't think did. there's I don't think there's any concern that we're gonna lose our fire okay. station, okay? It says in the letter that it could probably be a possibility, but I don't see that. I think it's a money thing that's gonna be worked out. But I think it's an opportunity for us to push in for true consolidation for your neighborhood. 
Yeah, yes. along those lines, as I mentioned, Zach on our the fire district had the regular board meeting on February 14. I don't know if you attended that by Zoom. Their meeting you can attend by Zoom. And Zach reports that the uh, it says in its most recent February 14th meeting, Greater Naples considered the issue again, confirmed as you said, a deal had not been met, and stood by its decision to terminate service April 30th. Uh, Zach attended the meeting and it was stated on the record that it is expected a deal will be reached and yes. no service termination will take place. But the reality is that if an agreement is not reached, and thus Trader Naples revokes its notice and moves to continue providing service, service will stop. So that gets back to what you were doing. So I can basically that's just a little bit of filler for what you were doing. Right. So, All right. Let's, we're about out of time here. Um, thanks, Stan, for. Uh, Doing doing all that work, I you couldn't have asked for better guy. I, I, I suggest, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Truckee made a request. I think to an appropriate request that he be the designated representative of the district Absolutely. to uh, communicate with and be part, participating in to articulate the district yeah. position and uh, provide information. So I think it would be appropriate to have a motion. Uh, I make a motion that Dan Dan spearheads this uh, this work with the fire. Uh, district and whatnot. Just second. I'll second it. All in favor? Sure. Aye. 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 I'm on point. <laughs> Thank you. That went screen so it was rubber. Okay. Uh, now, then we're on to supervisor's requests. Anybody have a, any requests for today? None? Comments? Uh, I'm sorry. I missed your name. Lynette Rose. And, and that's got something for us. I live on Sunrise K, and I was very pleased to see Mr. McNamee riding through the, on a bicycle over on our side of the world in Newport. Um, but I was on my daily walk. You never get to walk in this community because there's always people that you know. There was about seven or eight of us that were standing there, and Mr. McNamee was there to talk to us. <clears throat> well, we talked about several subjects, not anything in particular, but I brought up everyone's always looking for additional funding sources for something. There is a funding source called Community Development Block Grant Funds, CDBG. It's it's operated primarily for low and moderate income families, which we do not qualify for. But there is an area in it called Area Benefit, which we could possibly look at either a community center, we looked at uh, possible generators for emergency services, something of that sort. It is a once a year application, it's applied through the county. I did get the name and point of contact that I will give you for them. And uh, it's just something else to look at. How big? How much money? Oh, uh, I mean, you apply. I mean, it. Yeah, yeah, no, She's just starting the process. You know, uh, I'm just telling you there's another source of funding for, for qualified use. Um, the other thing that we talked about was military surplus. Mm -hmm. I have found three sites for military surplus that I'm more than happy to give you. I did look directly at McDill because that's in Florida, it's Tampa, it's the closest one. Um, that it, you will need to call to find out when the next one is. However, there is a site that's called uh, gulfplant.com. It has every surplus from military in the world. And it has one state and one location, Australia, Europe, wherever. You can go in and view which items are for surplus and the price that they're wanting for them. They're called an option. But I'll get that information to you. And that's part of what we discussed. What was your name again? Lynette Gross. Lynette. And this is a perfect example of what I'm trying to get going in this community. I see a group of people, I stop and I talk to them, and all of a sudden we find somebody who's got something a very, could be very beneficial to this community. All we have to do is ask them. And I would hope that we could continue this type of a thing where we've got people with expertise. All we have to do is find out and we can potentially um, have great benefit to this community. But, you know, I thank you for that. Um, I did it for 27 years. I retired. I love retirement. I don't want to do it, but I'm more than happy to help anybody that does want to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, audience, can I talk to you a little bit after? Sure. after? Okay. And, and go ahead. Uh, Patrick Oakmaker, 525 Newport Drive. 
I'm kind of new here. Um, can anybody tell me, uh, is mosquito spraying done and who pays for it? Why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> for us? Because you know the guy. <laughs> yeah, we do it whenever whenever the calls start coming in that um, they're getting that if you, if you start getting. But usually we, I think last year we started in February because of for some reason. But I haven't had I, I'm outside all the time and I haven't had any issues. But over at the marina, we're getting hammered. Can't spray over there. Like a wall. Oh. Can't spray over there. It kills the shrimp. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, and he's and he's, he's found that out the hard way. Twice, kill the shrimp twice. Oh yeah, no, go down Newport. But we can't. We used we were driving in around the marina, through the uh, where the cars are parked and stuff. To try and help. Yeah, no, we couldn't do that. But I wonder if we could uh, if we could look into some other type of application there that wouldn't kill shrimp. I don't know. We use the duet, which is the same thing the county uses. So. I don't know. But you, you I, okay, let's see if you can there. come up with something. <laughs> Why would we be responsible for the marina? That's county owned. Well, no, we okay. don't want to go in there and kill the shrimp every time we spray. No, the pe the people on the boats, the people on the boats are not on the owned. Yeah, they want to be the spray so that I can so drift over so the boats. The county to pay for it. They pay it. The I'll people, it. a lot of those people on those boats are paying assessments just like everybody else. Yes, so that's why we take care of them. Try but yeah, if people are starting to get bit, let me know because where I am, I'm, I'm any other no mosquitoes. Anything else for anybody? Do you want to see if there's anybody online? Absolutely. That, is there anyone online that had a comment? I guess not. I'm just gonna make a motion. Well, hearing no further comments, I may have a motion we adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Time to eat. All right. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Resume, resume at the water pool. HD? Yes, sir. Resume the record. To make it nice and clean, uh, Kevin's going to type it all up in resolution. You know, nice uh, okay. uh, but second of all, I wasn't thinking of the people living on the boats. I was thinking of people putting boats in the water. And like, that's, that's, that's fine. That's right.
I get that and going, I know. Okay. That's what I've been dealing with. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to carry it with the next one. I'm sorry? Uh, carry it with the next one. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, before you leave, uh, I've got this stuff in all I've had this aside. They wanted me to Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 